<laughs> What's that, Pom Pom? Uh, just got a message from the Xian Shou La Fu. Looks like it'll conflict with our original schedule. It's been a while, my friends on the Astral Express. How's your trailblazing expedition going? Soon, the Sienjo Law Fu will be holding the Luminary War Dance. Those who have aided the Law Fu in overcoming the crisis are cherished allies of the Sienjo. Thus, on behalf of the Seat of Divine Foresight, I'm extending an invitation to attend the ceremony. Your presence would be greatly appreciated. Well, things aren't getting lively. We've barely recovered from the family's Charmony Festival, and we're already being invited to another special event. Why not think about it this way? Our trailblazing expeditions are turning into blast expeditions, where we eat, drink, and play wherever we go. Blast? Expedition? Yeah! Wherever we go, we eat, play, and have a blast! So we should leave March behind to take care of the Express? Uh, hey! That's not what I meant! I'm all for some fun! I just hope there won't be any surprise party crashers, like Friday or Saturday. The Sienjo Lawfu has recently overcome a crisis. By holding the war dance, they're demonstrating to everyone that they've returned to a state of peace and safety. But that's what everyone said before we went to Penacony. You'll be totally safe under the family's protection. No need to worry. The war dance is not like the Charmony Festival with all its hidden secrets. It's just a festival to honor the Rainbow Arbiter and the Cloud Knights, who fought against the Abominations of Abundance and protected the Xianzhou ships. Aside from Star Skiff performances, it's mostly martial contests. Nothing too different from the Taikian Roboball contest we've seen before. What do you think, Himako? Since we've accepted Miss Black Swan's proposal, we should probably head to Amphorius for refueling. There's certainly no rush. This trailblazing expedition is quite unique, and the Express needs to be fully stocked and prepared before moving on to the next stop. With Madame Harta's help, I was planning to deliver some Leviathan fossils from Kalinga Abyss to Ron May, member 81 of the Genius Society. It could earn us some favors before we set off. However, it may take a few weeks. Ah, so that means... We're not going to the Lafu. Being an adult means maintaining relationships, whether we like it or not, March. Since we've been invited, it's only right for the Astral Express to attend the ceremony. So here's the plan. Pom Pom will take everyone to the Sienjo Lafu. Mr. Yang and I will meet up with Ron May and fulfill our promise. Meanwhile, you, March, and Don Hung will represent the Express and attend the war dance. What do you two think? Uh, Himeko and Mr. Yang will be busy with serious research. Besides, fossils can't compete with martial contests when it comes to fun, right? Plus, you're the only one with so many friends on the Law Fu. I'll be lost if you don't come along. You've got to lead the way. Now that everyone's on board with the plan, it's time to warp to the Xianzhou La Fu! Kalinga Abyss? What does she expect to find there? Current research on the Leviathan merely proves how little we know about such life forms. That's why geniuses are interested in that field. Science is all about uncovering the unknown. Don't miss us too much. <laughs> if I stumble upon some cool leviathan fossils, I'll bring a few back as souvenirs for you. Himeko really knows how to convince people. 
<laughs> Between Leviathan fossils and the war dance, the latter definitely sounds more fun. Uh, by the way, Don Hung, this time you'll be taking a stroll with us on the Lafu, right? <laughs> and just let you two wander around aimlessly on the Lofu by yourselves? <laughs> I don't think so. Plus, Mr. Yang is right. The Ambrosial Arbor Crisis just ended, and both the long life and short life species are still feeling uneasy. And that's why Jing Yuan wants to organize the war dance to show that the Xianzhou Lo Fu is stable and safe. And uh, since he has extended an invitation, it's only right that I visit my old friend. To this place brings back so many memories, you know? Well, it's nothing too poetic. I was just thinking about all the twists and turns we went through when we first arrived at the Sienjo ship. This time, we're not being forced or enticed or chasing after wanted criminals. And we didn't have to sneak in through the cargo dock. This trip has been incredibly smooth. Quite unusual, I must say. <laughs> I'm just hoping for the best. You're the one jinxing us. Yanqing said General Jing Yuan sent him to welcome us. But where is he? Hey, you guys! Hold on a moment! Uh, did they just call us? Oh, look at their outfits! They're from Penacony, right? Are you familiar with the Sienjo Lafu? <laughs> we know a little bit about it. What do you need? We are from Penacony. Maybe you've heard of it. We came to this ship to gather interesting materials for making dream bubbles. Oh, we just left there. Oh, talk about coincidence. That's great. Do you know any must-see attractions on the Lofu? Exactly! We're Sienjo experts. Uh, most of the tourists around at the moment are here to attend the war dance. And that's why we're here, too. Yeah, we know about that ceremony. But isn't the fighting ring still closed? I've heard the ring was actually converted from a huge decommissioned Lafu fighter jet. No doubt about it. It's a massive fighter jet. It's got to be larger than a civilian star skiff. But for now, all we can do is wait until the war dance starts in a few weeks, before we can board it. We've still got work to do, so we can't just sit around waiting for it to start. That's why we're asking you about some must-see attractions. We're looking for unique experiences that you won't find on Penacony. Our clients love these kinds of dream bubbles the most. Uh, you're the expert here. <laughs> Give them some suggestions. That's indeed a good idea. While the dreamscape on Penacony is all artificial, Scale Gorge Waterscape is a celebration of nature's resurgence. It has some remarkable scenery. Awesome! I love being out there in nature. Let's go to Scale Gorge Waterscape first. I'm a bit worried that nature-themed dream bubbles might be outdated. But hey, let's go check it out anyway. See you later. Maybe we'll run into each other there in a few days. Uh, look, Yan Ching's here. Oh, really? Let's go catch up with him. Here, 
There you are! Everyone, this way! Hey, everyone! It's been a while! Well, it doesn't feel like it's been that long since we last saw you! But, Yen Ching, are you...? What's up, Miss March? Oh, they say kids grow up really fast. Uh, Yen Ching, are you a little bit taller than before? <sighs> We've only been away for a few months. doing sorry but after our previous adventures I've become suspicious of whoever greets us first Ugh, do you have to be suspicious around me too you know the last time we came to the Sienjo the first person who greeted us was uh, I get it better safe than sorry Seriously, I've never seen the La Fu so lively before. I was a bit worried that holding the war dance right after the Ambrosial Arbor Crisis might be too soon, but seeing the bustling Starskiff Haven, I understand why General Jing Yuan chose this timing. Yep, there's people from other delves and travelers like you three who've come from afar. With the war dance coming up, there's a huge number of visitors pouring into the Starskip Haven. The Cloud Knights are working hard to keep the security tight. The General said this ceremony would help the Sienjo Lafu recover from the crisis. It's a way to showcase our martial spirit, reassure people, boost morale, and attract visitors from other planets to promote trade and peace. By the way, the Sienjo Alliance places great importance on this ceremony too. The Sienjo ships, the Zhu Ming and the Yao Qing have both sent messengers to offer their blessings. Yeah, the Sienjo Yao Qing is a major force in hunting down abominations and is always engaged in conflicts across the cosmos. Although it's a member of the Sienjo Alliance, I don't know much about it. But Madame Yu Kung from the Skyfaring Commission mentioned that the Yao Qing always sends back reports of great victories which is quite impressive. I heard General Fei Xiao of the Yao Qing is a young and dauntless lady. Hmm. My peers say that she's like a goddess of war, capable of crushing dozens of abominations with a single punch. Huh. I wonder if it's true. <laughs> if only I could witness her prowess with my own eyes. By the way, Yan Qing, where are we headed next? Uh, I'm sorry for talking your ear off. The General wants to catch up with you at the Palace of Astra. He's been eager to hear about how the Express has been doing. <laughs> it's funny how he tries to act all mature, but whenever it comes to something he's interested in, you can really see his childish side. I agree. All units, assemble quickly! Get ready to protect the crowd! Huh. I just mentioned security, and now all of a sudden something's gone wrong. Excuse me, I need to go check out the situation. Hey! What's that supposed to mean? Um, we'll go with you. Thanks for the help. 
sorry. No time to chat. Uh, could you give me back my... I'm sorry, but I'm afraid we'll have to put our plans on hold for now. I need to find out what's going on. While we appreciate your rescue, my CNJO friends, don't you think it's a bit too much to detain us and our cargo? Sorry, but we've been ordered to detain you and your cargo for inspection until we figure out the source of the attack. Once we're done with the formalities, we'll let you and your cargo go. Oh, but this shipment isn't even meant for the LaFu. And it's IPC's patented technology. Who do you think you are to conduct an inspection? According to the protocol, all cargo arriving on the LaFu must go through inspection. Oh, but we didn't officially enter your dock at all. We just sought refuge in your dock because we were attacked by the Borisids. Looks like this argument could go on forever. Let's not get involved in a heated dispute that won't lead to a resolution. In charge here. I need some answers. It's my fault. We let our guard down for a moment. I take full responsibility. With the war dance approaching, safety should be a top priority. Now, tell me. How did Boris and prisoners end up in Starskiff Haven? According to the protocol, Boris and prisoners should be held on a Starskiff and taken directly to the Shackling prison under strict supervision without ever touching the ground. Who allowed a prisoner transport ship to dock at the passenger terminal? Please don't blame this, Captain. This incident involves the Chu Ming's diplomatic vessel. Who are you? I'm Lu Jun, an officer of the Patrol Defense Squad. Thank you for your help, Lieutenant Yen Ching. The situation unfolded rapidly and it shouldn't be held against the captain. Here's what happened. An IPC transport ship was attacked by the Borisid just before arriving, and the Ju Ming's diplomatic vessel came to the rescue. They fought off the Borisid pirates and imprisoned them on their ship. So, an IPC ship was attacked by the Borison near the Lafu, and the Juming envoys saved them? Uh, sounds complicated. Honestly, it gives me a headache, too. The Juming diplomatic ship, adhering to standard procedure, docked at the passenger terminal to hand these criminals over to the Lafu. You know, with all the outsiders flooding onto the Lafu, the Starskiff lanes are under immense pressure. Boris and Desperados decided to put up a fight before the prisoner transport Starskiff could get there. And that's what you just witnessed. We'll make sure these prisoners are sent to the Shackling prison as soon as possible. I see. It's an unusual situation indeed. I'll report it to the security department of the Realm Keeping Commission and ask for their cooperation in handling the aftermath. <sighs> Maybe I should gather more details from others, so that the Seed of Divine Foresight can have a better understanding of the situation. Oh, you look much mature now, Yanqing. Please don't tease me, Miss March. The situation on the Sienjo before the war dance is like a calm lake that can be disturbed by even the smallest pebble. Capable of generating far-reaching ripples with even the slightest disturbance. What are those people? I mean, those monsters we just dealt with. Yeah, those werewolf monsters are known as Borison. They are abominations of abundance, and we've been fighting them for a very long time. The Borison have been a powerful force for a long time, plundering and enslaving many worlds. The threat they pose is just as terrible as the Swarm Disaster, and the Alliance even had a fierce war with them three decades ago. Their presence has faded over the years, but who would have thought? According to that officer, they attacked an IPC ship near the Senjo Lofu. Such a brazen attack seems quite unusual to me. Yeah, that's what I find strange too. It seems like the IPC and the Borison have some serious grudges. 
Well, enough with the chit-chat. The General wants me to take you to the Palace of Astrum. I'd love to chit-chat a little longer, but there are some things that can't be left unchecked. Hmm? Is it a serious matter? Maybe you'll need our help in hunting down the Borison? Thank you, but it's no big deal. By the way, that young lady who just appeared, she took my sword. I'm thinking of filing a lost property report at the Realm Keeping Commission to see if I can get it back. <laughs> I doubt she did it on purpose. <sighs> Don't remind me. I just zoned out for a moment, that's all. All right, let's not keep the general waiting. Don't worry. There aren't many people out there with that kind of talent. It shouldn't be too hard to find her. There sure are a lot of troublemakers around. It's been a long journey, Elder Huai. Thank you for your presence. <laughs> Don't mention it. Thank you for taking the time to welcome me. General, I brought our guests from the Express. Uh, oh, I'm sorry for my bad timing. I didn't know you were meeting a guest, General. Don't worry, you're just in time. <laughs> it's been a while, my friends from the Astral Express. Sure, how couldn't I have? It's not often we find such moments to reunite and enjoy one another's presence. Since when did she and General Ching Yuan become such good buddies, Don Hung? They seem to be having a great time. <sighs> a lot must have happened without our knowledge. At least, I hope that's the case. Allow me to introduce you to General Hua Yin. He's the Arbiter General of the Xianzhou Zhuming, known as the Flaming Heart. No need to be so formal. I'm just a tourist here, no different from other tourists who've come to attend the ceremony. Elder Huayen is not only one of the Arbiter Generals, but also the Furnace Master of the Artisanship Commission. Besides his martial skills, he excels in forging various weapons. Such talents are unique, even among the Arbiter Generals. Be it Arbiter General or Furnace Master, these are merely titles given to me long ago. I've retired several times already, but with the current change in circumstances, the Marshal has called me back to duty, and I had no choice but to answer the call. Well, in the end, I'm to blame. Living such a long life naturally brings its share of disapproval. It's, it's an, an honor, honor to, to meet, meet you, you, General Huayan. It's my honor to meet you, General Huayan. No need to be all formal. Today I'm just a guest on the Lawful, the same as all of you. So, these three are the ones you mentioned, Jing Yuin? The heroes who helped you with the Ambrosial Arbor Crisis? Indeed. There's Don Hung, March 7th, and her. Without their help, I'm afraid the La Fu might not have easily overcome this crisis. So, the Imbibator Lune's reincarnation has returned to the La Fu and will attend the war dance. I'd love to have a drink with you, should the chance present itself. You're more than welcome, General Huayan. And this young friend is? Yanqing, my apprentice. 
He remains by my side as my retainer due to his youth, which I hope will season him with experience. He will stand for the Law Fu's Cloud Knights in the upcoming war dance, ready to take on all kinds of challenges. Great, great! It's a real treat to see so many talented young people around here today. Oh, I almost forgot. This is my apprentice, Yu Li. Oh, it's you. <laughs> Hello. Oh, you two already know each other? Guess we don't need any introductions, then. What a coincidence! I was afraid I'd have trouble finding this girl. Oh? Now you've piqued my curiosity. Tell me, how did you two become acquainted? She helped me capture the escaped Borison prisoners at the Starskip Haven. Allow me to express my gratitude for you. But when you left, you took my flying sword with you. Your flying sword? <laughs> oh, so that's why I found a dagger in my bag. Turns out it's yours. Yes, it is. Now that we've met again, I hope... <laughs> nope, that won't do. Won't do? You want your sword back, right? Well, you can't just take it back. On the Juming, when you lose your sword on the battlefield, you have to reclaim it on the battlefield. <laughs> As for this little sword, it was supposed to strike that escaped Boris in prisoner. But unfortunately, its owner's agitated state caused it to fly off like a kite with a broken string, and it missed its target. By the way, if I hadn't caught it and helped it hit its mark, that Borison prisoner would have gotten away. Hold on a second, Lee. You took my sword without even asking, and now you're refusing to give it back? <sighs> so much for Lafu Swordmasters. What did you just say? If you just stepped up and took your sword back from me fair and square, I would have totally respected you. But nope, you tried to play it down, expecting me to just hand it back to you like it's nothing. In front of everyone! With all due respect, you don't honor your sword. So you don't deserve it. Hasn't anyone told you that taking without asking is stealing? If you want to settle this with swords, fine. Let's have a one-on-one -on -one duel right now. Yang Ching. <laughs> well, that's more like it. Just be careful. Because I'm not as easy to handle as the Borison. Uh, you two, be quiet and apologize to Yen Ching. <laughs> hey! Whose side are you on, Grandpa? I... um... I don't take sides. It's a small misunderstanding. And an apology would be too much. I've heard about the Zhu Ming's incredible swordplay and craftsmanship. Most notably, the legendary Flame Wheel Octet. Seeing Miss Yun Li, who is among those ranks today, well, I must say, she definitely has that fiery edge. <laughs> Such grandiose names. Some folks love to spin these fancy titles trying to set the Cloud Knights apart. Yun Li is still just a young girl, a bit awkward and hot-tempered, so please forgive her if she's being rude. Well, everyone, Elder Hua Yen and I have some business to discuss. For now, Yang Ching, why don't you entertain our guests and take Miss Yun Li to the inn? I'll find another chance to talk with you all. I'd like to express my gratitude to the Astral Express for helping the Law Food during the crisis. That's so kind of you. I mean, you've already thanked us so many times. Please forgive me for coming at an inconvenient time. You needn't apologize, General Huayan. All right, Yun Li. 
take this opportunity to clear things up with Yen Ching. Yeah, yeah. It's better to make friends than enemies. But I won't be heading to the inn just yet. I want to visit Lingsha. She just arrived in the Lafu and could use some help settling in. Yang Ching, once you've helped our guests get settled, go to the Artisanship Commission for me. I've heard about the attack and the detainment of the IPC ship. Chingzu sent word that the IPC members are protesting and wish to have their cargo back. See if you can calm them down. Don't get aggressive. Just make it clear that the Sienjo Lafu has no intention of violating their rights. I'm on it. This is the report Ching Zhu just sent me. Let me take a look. Hmm. Huh. Looks like the General has given me a tough challenge. He wants me to try and help put the IPC's mind at ease. Well, it's not exactly a test. As Cloud Knight officers, we not only learn the art of war and martial arts, but also occasionally have to handle diplomatic disputes. It's just, you know, talking things out isn't as straightforward as duking it out with weapons on the battlefield. This is especially true when you're up against the IPC, with their non-stop corporate babble. <sighs> well, let's not worry about that for now. Shall I take you to the inn? It is the Lawfu's honor to have you in attendance at the war dance. Yet. The fact that a simple martial arts ceremony has attracted esteemed generals from the Zhu Ming and the Yao Qing implies intentions beyond mere spectating. Might there be any specific instructions from the marshal? You're overthinking it, Jing Yuan. As I said, I'm here to broaden my granddaughter's horizons. I have no ulterior motives. However, I have no clue what the Yao Qing Arbiter General has in mind. Do you remember when you accepted this position? I told you that an Arbiter General's battlefield goes beyond the physical one. You'll need to lead and manage everything on the Sienjo. The title of Arbiter General holds a weight far greater than its literal meaning. So many years have passed, and you've done well. However, longevity for the Sienjo people can be a curse. Living too long means that every mistake you made will lurk in the shadows. And one day, they'll eventually catch up to you. The Marshal knows everything that has happened on the Lawful. As for the Merlin's Claw of the Yao Qing, she has come specifically for you. Speaking of which, why hasn't she arrived yet? They say the Merlin's Claw strikes like lightning. Being late isn't her style. That's not true, General Hua Yen. She's been here a while, but I'm sure you've heard of her unbridled nature. As soon as she disembarked from the Star Skiff, she mentioned having something to attend to, and simply disappeared. You must be the messengers from the Xianzhou Yao Qing, I assume. We are Jiao Cho and Moza, retainers of the Merlin's Claw. It's an honor to meet you in person, Arbiter Generals. Hmm. Now this is interesting. A guest who doesn't come to visit, but sends a message instead. Hmm. What does she mean? Tell me, what could be more important to her than coming here? Master heard about a spectacular view in Scale Gorge Waterscape. I believe she went there to enjoy it. 
A spectacular view? Ha! Did you hear that, Jing Yuen? This person is being sarcastic. Please do not misunderstand me, General Hua Yen. I was simply stating the truth. Master thought it would be inappropriate to keep you waiting, so she sent us here. Once she's finished with admiring the scenery, she'll personally come and apologize to the both of you. Drat! I forgot to ask you and Lee to return my sword. No need to bother. The Juming envoys won't be leaving the Lafu anytime soon. I'll ask for it later when we meet again. Uh, by the way, I don't know if it's just me, but the general seemed a little... reserved. Could it be because of Elder Wyan's visit? Reserved? Really? Uh, maybe I'm just overthinking things. No, you're not. When I entered the Palace of Astrum, I realized that the messenger from the Xianzhou Zhu Ming was actually the Arbiter General himself. So, the messenger from the Xianzhou Yao Qing must be the Merlin's Claw herself, I presume. That's right. Well, that's what makes this entire thing so unusual. What's so unusual about it? They simply received an invitation from Jing Yuan. Just like the crew, right? <sighs> the war dance is just a small festival. And now we have two Arbiter Generals from other Xianzhou ships here. <sighs> I'm afraid they're here for something more. Huh. Maybe they've come to hold Jing Yuan accountable for the Ambrosial Arbor Crisis? Hold him accountable? Come on, didn't the Law Fu fall victim to the Disciples of Sanctus Medicus and the Antimatter Legion? Why would they blame the victim? Don Shu's rebellion and Ventilia's scheming are merely one side of the story to the other Arbiter Generals of the Alliance. Only a single piece of incontrovertible evidence remains, creating an endless source of potential complications. The Ambrosial Arbor. Yes. It's undeniable that the Plague Mark, which was subdued by the Xianzhou Lo Fu, has resurfaced. But was it really a conspiracy instigated by the Antimatter Legion? Or does it indicate a traitorous intent from within the Lo Fu, implicating Jing Yuan himself? Once the spark of suspicion is kindled, it proves hard to extinguish. Ah, uh, what was I thinking? Seriously, here I was looking forward to a carefree and enjoyable trip. But it seems wherever we go, drama is just around the corner. Aw, oh, I was so excited. I thought those Arbiter Generals were just here to see the ceremony. By the way, I heard that an alchemist from the Juming diplomatic ship has arrived, and rumors say that she's to be the new Cauldron Master of the Alchemy Commission on the Wafu. Hmm, an alchemist from the Zhu Ming serving as the Cauldron Master on the Lofu? While it's not unheard of, the timing itself... Thanks to your words, Mr. Don Hung, now I finally see the underlying tensions. The General is under tremendous pressure right now, but I was completely oblivious to his troubles. <sighs> How naive of me. Uh, come on, don't think like that. Leave the adult matters to the adults. Even if you wanted to do something for the general, it's not like you can do anything. <sighs> uh, did I say something wrong? Again? Miss March is right. I don't have the skills to share the general's burdens at the moment. Still, I'll do my best to follow his instructions. Let's go. Once I've taken you to your accommodations, I need to go to the Artisanship Commission to handle the IPC's protest. Uh, 
He looks like he has a lot on his mind. We can't just let him go alone. Uh, why don't we accompany you to the Artisanship Commission? Uh, this is too much trouble. While I appreciate your kindness, dealing with the IPC's workers could be tricky. I'm afraid this will cause trouble for the Express. Uh, no worries! We're pretty experienced in dealing with the IPC. You've heard of the Ten Stone Hearts? We've dealt with quite a few of them, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, are you being sarcastic? Well, since you're willing to help, I won't decline your kindness. Let's head to the Artisanship Commission and meet them. Can I really reason with you, Sienjo people? I think I get it now. In your words, this is called looting a burning house, right? But I am trying to reason with you here. That toxic voice sounds familiar. Haven't I heard it before in Arum Alley? You know what? This isn't my first time dealing with the Skyfaring Commission. I can handle your unreasonable ways. But straight up snatching IPC cargo? Isn't that going a bit too far? Just as I've said it many times already, once we've inspected the cargo and completed the security check, you can be on your way. Is there something wrong with your ears, or is it just your brain? I'm hearing you loud and clear. I'm thinking clear. And my answer is crystal clear. Not a chance. Keep detaining my cargo and I'll file a complaint directly with your general. I was gonna ask you the same thing. Why do I keep running into you? Staying on the Sienjo, are you? What terrible luck. Wherever you go, disasters aren't far behind. Aren't you the guest from the Astral Express? What brings you and Yan Ching to the Artisanship Commission? Trouble caused by the IPC? I'd say it's caused by the Skyfaring Commission! Looks like you've met this IPC worker before. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's a good or a bad thing. I was sent here to deal with the IPC protest, Ms. Shikue. What's going on here? As you know, this IPC transport ship was attacked by the Borison and rescued by the Juming's diplomatic ship. Then the Cloud Knights were instructed to bring it back to the dock for repairs and inspections. And this is Mr. Scott, the person in charge of this transport ship. So you're Scott. I've heard her mention you. Weren't you kicked off the Lafu before? Why did you come back? Like I wanted to come back. I thought I'd just dock at the harbor for repairs and leave this forsaken place for good. Little did I know, as soon as the ship entered the harbor, a bunch of Cloud Knights showed up and snatched all our cargo from the hold. What do you mean by snatched? I've told you a million times. It's a security check. Then why did you bring the cargo to the Artisanship Commission? You even brought in some shady craftsmen. It's obvious you're trying to steal the IPC's patented technology! Listen here. Firstly, the Skyfaring Commission detected dangerous items that could possibly be weapons in your cargo hold. That's why they called me here, to double check. Secondly, where the heck did you get the idea that I'm a shady craftsman? Even if there are dangerous items, what do they have to do with you? It's not even being shipped to the law, fool. We'll just fix the ship and be on our way. We won't unload our cargo here. But you'll have to stay in the port for several days before your ship is repaired and you can take off again. How can we just leave unchecked items sitting here? I understand, but we don't need to disassemble the cargo if it's just a security check, right? In most cases, we don't. However, our scans discovered that the cargo doesn't only contain machinery, but also some... substance that resembles biological tissue. 
biological tissue? Does this crate contain living things? I'm afraid we'll need to wait for the Alchemy Commission for further confirmation. In any case, according to our regulations, we need to unseal one of the crates for further examination. But this IPC specialist has been hindering us on the grounds of patent secrecy. The Alliance's regulations on biological products are very strict. Without further inspection, there is no way for the Skyfaring Commission to release the cargo. Oh, really? Fine! If anyone lays a finger on that shipment, they'll have me to deal with! It doesn't matter if it's mechanical or biological! It's none of your business! I'm filing a complaint against the Skyfaring Commission's ridiculous regulations! <sighs> this Mr. Scott seems stubborn and difficult to persuade. Honestly, I really don't want to have a vicious confrontation with the IPC. I heard how you helped Aram Ali. The IPC representative back then was Mr. Scott, right? Since you've dealt with him before, it looks like I'll have to rely on you again. What are you guys whispering about over there? Just hurry up and give us back our cargo! As I recall, this guy won't listen to reason and can only be persuaded with intimidation. But he does seem to follow rules to some extent. Let's use that against him. Speaking of regulations, we have our own laws and regulations too. According to Article 4 of the Sienjo Alliance IPC trade consensus, the Alliance and IPC shall never infringe on each other's intellectual property rights. The Alliance can sign a non-disclosure agreement with you. That way, you won't have to worry about any infringements, right? We can sign a mutually acceptable non-disclosure agreement in accordance with the IPC's rules. Well, uh, that makes sense, but how can we trust you to honor the terms? <clears throat> Even if we set aside the secrecy of intellectual property, these prototypes built by the Intelligentsia Guild are incredibly valuable, beyond your wildest imagination. If anything goes wrong, you won't be able to pay for it even with your lives. Don't underestimate Sienjo technology. Even if they need to dismantle your cargo, the Artisanship Commission can easily put it back together. Yeah, go ahead and brag about their skills. After all, you're just a negotiator they hired. But I'm different. I'm an IPC member, and my fleet has accepted this transportation order. Natural. Besides, the cargo on this transport vessel belongs to the Intelligentsia Guild. If you want to inspect the cargo, shouldn't you at least call in a member of the Intelligentsia Guild to be present? Since the Intelligentsia Guild entrusted the cargo to the IPC for transportation, it's the IPC's responsibility to ensure its safety, right? Why would you need a member of the Intelligentsia Guild to be present? <laughs> Let me tell you something. As stated in Article 17 of the IPC's Building Material Logistics Department Transport Agreement Law, subsequent to the dispatch of goods and during their transit, all risks, save for those pertaining to the transportation safety, shall be the sole liability of the consigner. Well, only protect the integrity of the goods and prevent anyone with ill intentions from getting their hands on them, for example. <clears throat> As for whether the cargo itself poses a security threat to the destination, that's not our responsibility. It appears we have reached an area beyond your expertise, doesn't it? The complexity of legal studies are indeed challenging. 
we both need to follow the regulations, because that's how the IPC and the Sienjo operate, right? As an IPC worker, I have to abide by its regulations. If I make an exception... <sighs> Your logic is too confusing for anyone to follow. Maybe you should learn the art of communication from a monkey before you continue spouting nonsense? Everyone has their own set of rules. Now that you're on their turf, shouldn't you follow their rules too? Yeah, I get it. I know I'm on the Sienjo, but if I violate the IPC regulations, I'll be in deep trouble when I get back. Well, you guys sure know how to argue your case. Fine, I'll allow you to do the security inspection. It's just that uh, I need some time to sort things out. This is a big deal. Let me talk to headquarters first. So, Mr. Scott, are you just stalling for time and planning to leave the CN Joe as soon as your ship is repaired? To avoid the Skyfaring Commission's inspection? Well, IPC staff are free to come and go, as long as they don't break any laws. Yeah, you've got some insight there. Who are you again? Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Lingshock, Cauldron Master and Head of the Alchemy Commission on the Law Fleet. Could she be? Yeah, she's the new Cauldron Master assigned here from the Sienjou Zhuming. I received a report from the Artisanship Commission about cargo containing samples of unknown organisms. It said they needed help from the Alchemy Commission. I had nothing better to do, so I came myself. It's fine, Mr. Scott. If you really don't want your cargo to be inspected, it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter? How can you say that? Why are you being so nice all of a sudden? Hmm? Well, since you're not going to check it, I'll take this crate and be on my way. Is that okay with everyone? Yeah, sure. Why should I object? Not only this sample, but all the goods on the transport ship are yours to keep. Like I said, we won't inspect them. Wait a minute! Well, that's more like it! If only the young displayed a more... reasonable attitude, we could have sidestepped that altercation just now. Our ship will leave in a few days once the engines are repaired. Your ship can leave whenever you want, but I'm afraid I can't say the same for your cargo. According to the import and export regulation signed between the Sienjo and IPC, all biological shipments can only leave the port when they have confirmed to be of no threat, or when all biological activity expires. Since we can't determine if your shipment is safe for the environment, I guess we'll have to wait for its biological activity to expire. Let me check the previous cases. Normally, it'll only take around 47 star calendar years. <laughs> only 47 years? Why so surprised? You're still young and full of energy. I'm pretty sure you'll live a few more decades. Have some confidence in yourself. Ha! Typical of a long life species. Your words are dripping with sarcasm. While you may not care about time, I do. I'll be demanding double compensation from the Skyfaring Commission for every minute wasted. Sure thing, Mr. Scott. You seem pretty confident that your career and life will last long enough to witness this victory unfold. Step aside, guys. Let them do the inspection. Uh, but, Mr. Scott... 
Come on, we're already in enough trouble. Just let them do the security inspection. And if needed, I can always grovel before the Intelligentsia Guild later. I'm just using my head for what it's apparently good for, right? Well, honestly, at least you're not as annoying as that woman. Bro, just do the inspection. This lady is really something else. Is this the IPC product? Uh, uh, listen up. Any damages caused by inspections will be filed with the IPC. Turn it off. triggered the cargo's defense program. I don't think trying to shift the blame is a wise choice. But seriously, I don't know why that thing suddenly started moving. I swear on the Amber Lord. Enough. Miss Shikwe, please escort our IPC guest to the Skyfaring Commission. I'm on it. Please follow me, Mr. Scott. Gentlemen, our preliminary inspection shows that there is indeed hidden biological tissues inside. Just like the craftsmen feared. I can't even tell if it's ingenium or biological in nature. The core of this device is what they call wetware, in industry slang. To put it simply, this machine operates with a kind of biological nerve as its control center. I'll take some samples for the alchemist to analyze and figure out where the biological tissue comes from. Why would the Intelligentsia Guild use such unethical technology? Perhaps they're trying to create a new weapon? Whatever the reason is, it's probably why the Borison attacked the ship. No wonder the IPC were trying to obstruct our inspection. I'll contact the Ten Lords Commission and ask the judges to come and give their final verdict on this. According to our rules, all prisoners and weapons involving dangerous creatures must be taken to the Shackling Prison for further sentencing. After all, it's the safest place on the Lafu. As for you, Mr. Craftsman, please go with the Cloud Knights and explain the situation to the judge. I had a feeling that the IPC members would cause trouble, but I didn't think they'd be this tricky. Thanks for your help, Miss Lingsha. I should thank you for saving my life. Your sword skills were impressive. Taking down that big guy. I thought the General's retainers were all burly martial masters. I didn't expect Yenching to be so... Huh? As for you, you must be the guests from the Astral Express, right? Saving the Lafu from that crisis. It's so impressive. <laughs> it wasn't a big deal. Really? It's still early, so why don't we get some tea at the Alchemy Commission? We can discuss your suggestions for revitalizing the Commission. Uh, I'd be happy to accept your invitation. And you three are coming too, right? All these years, and the view at the Alchemy Commission hasn't changed a bit. The tides come and go, but the ancient sea remains the same. For us, Vidyadara, there's nothing more nostalgic than our homeland. 
You're a Lofu native, Miss Lingsha? Yes. I grew up here. Listening to the sound of waves while researching prescriptions with my mentors and peers at the Alchemy Commission. It's kind of sad, isn't it? Everything changes, but somehow remains familiar. Just like you, Don Hung, I traveled far from home, and now I've returned. Seeing the familiar scenery brings back a hint of nostalgia. Uh, the view here would be even better without the Ambrosial Arbor. Oh, really? I think that towering tree looks pretty impressive. Even if it's impressive, it's a plague mark. The Sienjo have been fighting abominations for thousands of years. And now that the Ambrosial Arbor has been reborn, it's only natural for everyone to feel uneasy. Well, once a seed is planted, no matter how long it takes, it'll eventually sprout and bear fruit. In my humble opinion, the rebirth of the Ambrosial Arbor and the resurgence of the disciples of Sanctus Medicus were inevitable. The seed was already planted when the ancestors of the Sienjo sought immortality. <laughs> My bad. Well, since you went through the entire Ambrosial Arbor crisis firsthand, Dan Hung and Lieutenant Yan Ching, I'd like to discuss something with you. What would you like to discuss, Miss Lingxia? I was lucky enough to be chosen by the Alliance to come in and clean up all the old grime in the Alchemy Commission. Honestly, the Alchemy Commission is riddled with problems and has reached a point where fixing it seems impossible. I'm looking to remedy this problem, but was wondering if you could provide any insights. Well... Even though I'm a Vidyadarin like you, I'm an outsider, just like my companions here. I can't really say much about a remedy, but I do have a piece of advice, Miss Lingxia. The Vidyadara and the Alchemy Commission on the Lofu have always been intricately connected. If you cannot distance yourself from these ties, Miss Lingxia, Changing the situation within the Alchemy Commission may be quite challenging. I may not know about politics, but I do know that the disciples of Sanctus Medicus have been operating within the Alchemy Commission for years. If you're determined to root them out, maybe you should discuss it with the General. I see. Thank you for your valuable insights. While the Lux Arrow from the Rainbow possesses unparalleled power to sever the Ambrosial Arbor, it can't sever mortals' desire to prolong their existence. Just like how the Cloud Knights can eliminate the remnants of the Disciples of Sanctus Medicus, but are unable to calm the hearts and minds of the people within the Alchemy Commission. Our Sienjo forebears knew this well, and that's why they entrusted the duty of guarding the roots of the Arbor to the Vidyadara. However, the Vidyadara are still only mortal beings. Thirty years ago, my mentor served as Alchemy Commission's Cauldron Master. She recognized the emerging undercurrents and sought to cleanse the source of the disturbance. Unfortunately, even though she was skilled in the art of healing, she didn't understand the human heart or how to eliminate the sickness lurking within the depths of the Alchemy Commission. In the end, she was framed and exiled to the Juming. I was also implicated and had to leave the Lafu. And guess who arbitrated the case and handed down the sentence? None other than General Jing Yuan himself. Wh what? You heard it right. The ones responsible for the corruption in the Alchemy Commission are not just the remnants of the disciples of Sanctus Medicus, but even the Divine Foresight himself. Alas, why is your face turning pale, Yanjing? Don't worry about it. 
I understand that when someone holds a position of power, they may sometimes have to make tough decisions. I won't hold any personal grudges against him. Besides, at our age, holding personal grudges is a luxury we can't afford. Lingxia, you're back! Oh, I've been waiting ages for you! Yunli! Why aren't you with your grandpa? What brings you to the Alchemy Commission? Well, let me take this opportunity to introduce you to Yan Qing. <sighs> what a small world. You! You stole my sword! Give it back! <laughs> I see. Let's skip the introduction part then. I keep bumping into you. Are you stalking me or something? Of course not. Unlike you, Miss Yun Li, I have important things to take care of. You, on the other hand, seem to have all the time in the world to wander around without returning my sword. <laughs> Grandpa used to say that a sword reflects its master. I talked to your sword, and it told me that you've been distracted. You hesitate when you should strike, and you struggle to stay calm when your sword is unsheathed. <laughs> now that I see you again, I realize your sword was right. It wasn't me who took your sword. It was you who lost focus. Do you really expect me to believe that nonsense? I've been taking it easy on you because you're a guest from the Juming, but you're not taking the hint. Don't people from the Juming know you're supposed to return what you've borrowed? <laughs> just look at this flying sword. Even if I gave it back to you now, it'd just be taken away again in a few hours. You know the Cloud Knight saying, a Cloud Knight must never let slip their weapon, yes? Well, sure, I can give it back to you now, but on the battlefield, that's a whole different story. <laughs> Flying sword. Fine! You don't have to give it back because I'll take it back myself! Between these two, who do you think is tougher? Don't get me wrong, I'm just curious. Get ready to separate them. It is my first day at the Alchemy Commission. A brawl is definitely not how I imagine celebrating it. <laughs> well, since you don't approve, I won't draw my sword here. I didn't mean it in that way. Since you've already drawn your swords, you'd be disappointed if you didn't get to test one another, right? I've received reports that the delves near the Alchemy Commission are still infested with abominations. Seems like my predecessors left quite a mess. So, if you two want to determine who's better, why not focus on them instead of each other? Hmm. Clearing out some abominations? <sighs> Sounds boring. It's the Cloud Knight's duty to eliminate those abominations. You don't have to ask me twice, Miss Lingxia. I'll help you get rid of them. Oh, you think you're the only one who knows how to behave? If Lingxia needs anything, I'll gladly draw my sword and help her out. It's so heartwarming to see both of you being so sweet and caring. So then, shall we get going? Ever since the disciples of Sanctus Medicus were eradicated, their experimental abominations have been festering here. If you want a contest, I'll be the referee. The one who kills the most abominations within an hour wins. <sighs> Ling Sha, as always, you're still an expert in making unpaid work sound so noble and grand. <sighs> it's for your own good, little Yun Li. While you desire to compete against each other, I don't want to see either of you getting hurt. That's really thoughtful of you, Cauldron Master. So, are you both ready? Ugh. 
Looks like my predecessors left quite a mess. Let me say it again. The one who kills the most abominations within an hour wins. Be careful when you draw your swords and make sure you don't hurt each other. <laughs> Can we start now, Lingsha? <sighs> See? I won. Your technique was all over the place, and you relied too much on speed. Is this really all the Cloud Knights of the Lawfu can muster? <laughs> so disappointing. All you did was chop down a few monsters. Don't get carried away with yourself. Oh, well then I'll give you a chance. Defeat me or hand over all your swords. If you're trying to pick a fight, just ask, because I'm ready for you. Well fought, my young friends. However, both of you have shortcomings. One of you focuses on dodging and weaving, while the other relies on brute strength, trying to take down targets with a single strike. Who are you? Me? I am just a patient seeking medicine from the Alchemy Commission. A passerby, if you will. I thought I'd see my fill of impressive fights during the war dance. Yet here I am, able to witness a remarkable fight at the Alchemy Commission, of all places. Well, the Lawfu is never short of surprises. However, I have a small suggestion for you. Why don't you settle this dispute fair and square in the war dance's ring? That way, you can resolve your differences with a proper duel and put your grudges behind you. Grudges? Uh, no, not at all. Yunli and I, we were just sparring. <laughs> sparring? You summoned your flying swords and she swung her sword with full strength. No grudges between you. Mm, I don't believe it. you here, Lady Faishal. Have you finished your health consultation with the Dragon Lady? Fei... Faishal? Grandpa always talks about you. Could it be that you are... The Merlin's Claw of the Sanjou Yaqing? Hmm. Looks like I'm quite famous on the Sanjou Lafu, too. Of course. Everyone has heard of the great general, known to all, and unbeknown to none. Great general? Isn't that title a bit too narcissistic? Mm, I don't like it. Ooh, I heard there's a dozing general on the Lawfu, so I came up with a humble nickname for myself. The Lacking General. Lacking in worries, regrets, and rivals. Sounds much better, right? <laughs> yeah, that's a befitting title that sounds both humble and impressive. Now that the sparring session is over, Yanqing and Yunli, shouldn't you politely thank General Feishao for her guidance and bury the hatchet? Uh, here's your sword. Keep it safe. Or it might get taken away again. By the way, we haven't settled the score yet. I'll defeat you fair and square next time we fight. This is how she apologizes? Th <sighs> now that I finally got my sword back, I should report to the Seat of Divine Foresight. 
I'll take my leave, General Fischau. Oh, by the way, Miss Linksha, if you've got some free time, I'd like to invite you to the Seat of Divine Foresight for a chat with General Jingyuan. I think there's more to those personal grudges you mentioned earlier. Thanks for stepping in, General Feishao. Otherwise, I'd have had to knock them out with my incense. Not at all. Just doing what you asked. How about we call it even as payment for the Healer Lady's consultation? Sorry, but even a general needs to pay their bills. We don't do credit here. And let's not forget, you'd have been waiting decades for a chance to see the Dragon Lady if it weren't for me. Well, you can always send the bill to the Seat of Divine Foresight and say it's for mentoring those kids. After all, it was quite the effort splitting them up. I nearly had to get tough. <laughs> Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to find a spot and get some fresh air. Back already? You've met with Jing Yuan and wandered around for a few hours. So, what do you think? It appears that the Divine Foresight is using this war dance as a show of strength to convince everyone that the Law Fu is prospering after the Ambrosial Arbor Crisis. But... I know you're going to say but, right? But... the influx of people attending the war dance is like a breeding ground for disorder and rumors. One wrong move, and the Law Fu could be in a world of chaos. The Cloud Knights on the streets remain vigilant, so at the very least, General Jing Yuan is aware of this. As for other matters, I'm unable to say. I'd prefer to be excused from future meetings with generals. I'm just a military healer, and now all of a sudden I'm thrust onto the center stage having cordial chats with two generals? My work doesn't lend itself to being in the limelight either. Just stop whining. At least you're in one piece, right? Before getting in touch with General Jing Yuan, I wanted to put aside my assumptions and see his momentum. That includes the overall bearing of the Cloud Knights on the street, what people are saying, and how those close to him behave. The might of an army dwells not within its pawns, but within the force of its collective momentum. Recognizing this fact reveals the true measure of power. <laughs> Thanks for enlightening me, General. A perfectly clear statement turned confusing thanks to your translation. <sighs> You've made me lose where I was now. Anyway, this is how I operate in battle, so you might as well get used to it. Are you treating General Jingyuan as your enemy? The longest serving general of the Xianzhou Law Fu. Do you think he'd have only a few enemies? By the way, General, you met the healer lady, yes? Could you show me the medicine she prescribed you? Well, the healer lady couldn't do anything about my condition. She just told me to enjoy some tasty food. So not even the famed healer lady could help? <sighs> Don't worry. I'll fulfill my promise and find a way to cure you. Actually, I've found some leads. Well, life and death, Zhao Cho. It's all predetermined. Upon starting my military career, I made a pledge that the rest of my life would be dedicated to being the Xianzhou's spearhead. Hunting down the abominations of abundance till the end of my days. As long as I can fulfill that deep-seated desire, I don't care how long I live. You asked if I viewed General Jin Yuan as my enemy. No. 
My real enemy has always been myself. Enjoy some tasty food. So, what's for dinner tonight? Jeez. You really know how to read the room, don't you? You guys figure it out for yourselves. I'm due to catch up with an old war friend I've not seen for quite a long time. Hey! Was that the Yao Qing general who just dropped in out of nowhere? Oh, she's so awesome! I mean, when Yun Li swung that massive sword, she just casually blocked her attack with ease. And mine too. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But to go up against Yun Li is quite impressive, you know? That aura of heroism and grace. It almost makes me want to learn Sienjo swordplay. You think so too, right? I agree. General Fei Xiao is indeed impressive. Uh, I was talking about Yan Qing, actually. Thanks for the kind words, Miss March. The war dance is coming up, and I've been chosen to represent the Cloud Knights in the ceremony. I've had my fair share of defeats lately, and even though I know there are always more skilled swordmasters out there, seeing General Fei Xiao's skills today has made me feel a bit uneasy again. Don't underestimate yourself. After all, generals won't fight in the ring during the war dance. Just remember the state of mind you had when you single-handedly took on me and Blade, putting life and death aside. With that mindset, you can prevail against most challengers. I see. Thanks for the advice, Master Don Hung. By the way, now that today's events are over, General Jing Yuan wants to invite all of you to the Seat of Divine Foresight. He has something important to discuss. I bet it's about how to deal with the generals from the Yao Qing and the Ju Ming. I really don't want to get caught up in grown-up games so soon. I just hope Generals Fei Xiao and Hui An can see the truth. We don't need any more chaos on the La Fu before the war dance. Earlier at the Palace of Astral, I introduced these guests from the Astral Express to you, Elder Hui. But with all the people around, we only exchanged pleasantries. Now, I'd like to officially introduce them to you. These three braved great dangers, accompanying me to perilous places, defeating the chief culprit Fantilia, and uncovering the conspiracies of the disciples of Sanctus Medicus. If you wish to know more, Please, feel free to ask us. Well, I skimmed through the reports about the Arbor's rebirth from the Master Diviner Hu Xuin. She's been summoned to the Yu Chui for questioning. There are a lot of doubts within the Alliance about this whole situation. But despite all that, I believe in you. Since you joined the ranks, you have repeatedly achieved remarkable feats. After the High Cloud Quintet each went their separate ways, despite the many criticisms within the Alliance, the Marshal still stood firm against the dissenting voices and entrusted the Lawfu to you. Over the years, you've served the Alliance with loyalty and wisdom. You've taken down abominations in Thalassa, rescued the Xianzhou Yuchui from a siege, and destroyed the demonic planet summoned by the denizens of abundance. I still remember those battles vividly. There are fools who doubt your loyalty. They're happy to see the divine foresight fail because it gives them some kind of sick satisfaction. They haven't achieved anything of their own, so they feed off the failures of others. But I've seen enough failures in my time, and I want to believe that your loyalty has never wavered. 
So General Fei Xiao of the Yao Qing is the only one investigating the Ambrosial Arbor Crisis on behalf of the Alliance? <sighs> no, no. I am too. This old man's words always catch me off guard. The Marshal ordered me to come to the Xianzhou Lafu, but the document only says attend the war dance and listen to Fei Shao's questioning. No need for that. You're all important witnesses. The Marshal is well aware of Jing Yuen's purpose in holding the ceremony, and understands the situation he is facing. She mentioned it because she believes both issues are important. Thanks for your kindness and sincerity, Elder Huayan. But is it appropriate to tell everyone here about the Marshal's orders? By introducing the Express's witnesses to me alone, Aren't you aiming to discern the intentions behind both my actions and Fei Shao's? And whether there's any discord between us? Well, since I'm being open and honest with you, I encourage you young folk to do the same. As for the Ambrosial Arbor Crisis, all I need to do is listen. General Fei Shao will be the one asking the questions. To be honest, I'm more concerned about the timely start of the war dance. Oh, by the way, I've prepared a gift for the war dance. Yes, it's this case right here. There will be numerous contests and celebrations during the war dance, and the main of the cosmos showcasing the excellent martial arts of the Sienzhou Lawfu. When you mentioned that the Astral Express would be attending the ceremony, I thought the High Elder of the Lawfu would be the ringmaster. <laughs> you humor me, Elder Huayan. The healer lady is just a young lady who knows nothing about martial arts. How can I assign her as the ringmaster? <laughs> I'm no match to you when it comes to joking. What's this box for? Why don't you open it, General Huayan? This sword case is intended for the war dance's award. It's empty now, but in a few days, a precious sword will be delivered and stored inside. I don't mean to boast about our skills, but this sword represents the pinnacle of the Ju Ming's craftsmanship. It has a legendary history, full of heroic tales from foreign lands. Tales that are too detailed to be summarized in just a few words. Since the delegation delivering the sword hasn't arrived yet, I'll just leave the case here for now. I've been wondering... Who would be worthy of such a sword? And then it hit me. I can award it to the champion of the Ringmaster's Challenge. The ceremony's champion is sure to be a perfect match for the sword. Moreover, I hear that Yen Xing is an excellent swordmaster, and that he will be representing the Lawfu as the Ringmaster. So it seems like a perfect gift for him. Thank you for your generosity. Elder Huayan. If you want to give me a sword, just say the word, Grandpa. No need to beat around the bush. <laughs> You've got confidence, my girl. But I don't think you can best Yin Jing. I know you're all about swords, Miss Yunli. It's just a shame that it's the sword that ultimately chooses its rightful master. Yeah. And even if someone gets their hands on such a precious sword, it'll probably end up in someone else's. The outcome of our duel at the Alchemy Commission is still up in the air. Since you're interested, why don't you represent the Xianzhou Juming and challenge me in the ring? That's exactly what I had in mind. Nobody knows who's gonna come out on top. It could be me, could be someone else. It'll probably be me. But whatever happens, it won't be him. Oh, not 
to be rude or anything. We've been watching their drama. I'm dying to find out who beats who. Hmm. Quiet down. We have other guests here. I've prepared this sword to add some excitement to the ceremony, not to have you two squabble. It's not a good look for the Alliance. While you both seem confident that you'll win, you need to remember there can only be one winner and one loser in the ring. Which could lead to hard feelings. Actually, I have an idea. We don't know who the winner will be, and it might not be either of you. But, if you're eyeing that prize, you'll need to work together. I want you to take on an apprentice who will take part in the war dance and win at least one match. How does that make sense? In my humble opinion, while a Cloud Knight is commendable by securing victories, it's even more so to pass on your skills and spread the way of swordplay. I'd be greatly pleased if this apprentice could represent the Express in the war dance by displaying their Cloud Knight flair prowess. Well, Elder Huayan's idea is quite interesting. Imparting swordplay skills requires teamwork, and both the winner and the loser will learn a valuable lesson regardless of the outcome. The question is, whom should the two of them take as an apprentice? I noticed just now that Miss March seemed quite interested in the outcome of your sword fight. So I thought, why not teach her the art of sword play? Uh, oh, wait! Are you serious, General? Why am I being dragged into this all of a sudden? I've never practiced sword play before! I'm a total newbie! You really think I can learn it? Well, you'll probably realize I have no hope and give up on me. And that'd be so embarrassing. Isn't this a perfect chance for you? I remember you mentioning that you wanted to learn some sword moves. Yeah, I did say that. But this is all happening so quickly, don't you think? Miss March is like a piece of jade in the rough, just waiting to be shaped. The war dance is the perfect opportunity to see what heights she can reach. I appreciate your kind words, General Yan, But won't teaching me swordplay be a waste of Yanqing and Yunli's time? They should be preparing for the ceremony. Plus, I heard that each swordmaster has their own special moves. What if they let something slip while teaching me? If everyone knows each other's tactics, won't that make it hard to catch people off guard during the war dance? <sighs> That's considerate of you, March 7th. But don't worry. It'll take you at least a decade of hard training before you can even start learning special moves. No need to freak out. A few Jooming swordplay tricks will mean you'll be more than equipped. Uh, really? Looks like March's curiosity has been piqued. <laughs> the whole point is to know each other's moves. Defeating your opponent in just one move? How boring would that be? Plus, what really decides a swordsman's fate isn't some special move. It's the solid fundamentals. So Miss Yunli has already agreed. What do you say, Yang Ching? General? I... I haven't graduated yet. How can I be qualified to teach swordplay to others? Huh. So you're admitting your defeat, huh? If you're not even confident to teach, why don't you let me be the ringmaster instead? Yang Ching, teaching an apprentice is also a way of honing your own skills and gaining insights. You've been an apprentice for years. It's about time you looked at swordplay from another perspective. I see, General. Then count me in. Now that Yang Ching has agreed too, it all comes down to Miss March giving her nod. <sighs> it's up to you to make the final decision, March. It 
At least that way, I won't have to worry about you accidentally shooting me in the butt all the time. Hey, I've never missed my target. Then I'm on board. Thank you for your kindness, General Huayan. Great. Starting tomorrow, Yen Ching and Yun Li will teach you the basics of the Cloud Knight's swordplay. Yun Li and I will head out and purchase some sword practice equipment for Miss March. Think of it as a little initiation gift. <laughs> you're too kind. Oh, wait, you're giving me a gift? Shouldn't it be the other way around? Ah, uh, General Huayan's gone. Wait, why does something feel off about what we talked about? Uh, I think we strayed off topic. How did things even get to this point? Yeah, I brought you here because the General said he had some important matters to discuss. But how in the world did you and Lee and I suddenly become Miss March's swordplay mentors? Because... General Huayan wants us to stick around on the Lo Fu for some time. But from his point of view, we're no different from all the other tourists who may leave at any time. Since the crew's actions were mentioned in the Lo Fu's operations log were given to the Alliance, he probably wants to see firsthand if we're as capable as to report claims, or if we're just some made-up excuse to save face. And he wants to see it for himself during the war dance, which is why he even dragged Yun Li into this. What began as a simple contest between two sword masters has <laughs> now evolved into you two collaborating to mentor March. Elder Huayan is... Still that tricky general, who likes to give everyone a headache. My apologies. Truth be told, I invited all of you to the ceremony because... My apologies. Truth be told, in the coming weeks... Don't worry, General. No matter what happens, I'm prepared to stay here as the Express's witness and answer any questions. <sighs> Thank you, everyone. General, I know there isn't much I can do to share your burden, but... Hmm? As the Lawfu Ringmaster, I won't let anyone defeat me in the war dance. <laughs> I know. The illustrious Merlin's Claw waiting for me? And for so long, too? It's quite an honor. It's been a while, General Feishao. It's been 30 years since we last saw each other, right, Yukong? Yes, back then you were the vanguard of the Yao Qing's verdant knights, and I was a pilot of the La Fu's Rainbow Orbit Fleet. Who would have thought that upon meeting again, you'd be a general, and I'd have given up flying? It really does feel like a lifetime ago. Well, I wouldn't say I haven't seen you in 30 years. After all, your great victories are announced through the Yellow Bell Resonance System every day. So I'm well aware of your great feats. How's your health holding up? Hmm. Still stable, I suppose. Do you still remember the medic who saved me in battle? That healer with the odd name and peculiar temperament. What was his name again? Was it Pichu? Or Katyo? Jiao Cho. He's been my retainer and personal healer, delegated by the Alchemy Commission from the Xianzhou Yao Ching. 
Over the years, he's dedicated himself to managing my condition. It's thanks to him that I'm still in good health today. Given my background, I'm happy to have made it this far. I'm relieved to know that you're safe and sound. Well then, since you and Elder Hua Yen are here, I imagine you must have received orders from the Marshal? As your friend, may I ask how the Alliance intends to punish the General of the Law Fu? The Arbor's rebirth has frightened the Elders who lurk behind the scenes. They fear the resurgence of abominations, much like what happened 30 years ago. Although the reports from the Law Fu explained all the details, we don't know if the Ruin Legion really invaded or how exactly the Stellaron Hunters and the Astral Express became involved. This puzzle has many missing pieces. As you know, the fugitive Jing Liu, who mysteriously disappeared many years ago, has resurfaced. This time, she has brought along an outworlder and a coffin, claiming to offer the Marshal a method to fight against the Eons. The Law Fu Preceptor has also leveled accusations against Jing Yuan for neglecting the Alliance's principles. She asserts that Jing Yuan enabled the exiled Imbibitor Lune to re-enter the Law Fu, thereby unlocking the Lunarescent Deaths within Scale Gorge Waterscape, which in turn disrupted the Vidyatara's dutiful watch over the Ambrosial Arbor. It is for these reasons that I have come here to the Law Fu today. Well, duty calls. Perhaps I shouldn't have mentioned all of this to an uninvolved person, but since we once fought together, I didn't want to keep you in the dark. Perhaps pretending you didn't hear any of this would be for the best. I understand. I'm sorry, I was out of line. I know I shouldn't be defending General Jing Yuan right now, but, well, you know how I am. The Law Fu has enjoyed centuries of stability since the end of the sedition of Imbibitor Lune, much of which can be attributed to General Jing Yuan's masterful strategizing. Unfortunately, for long life species, enduring through the ages always culminates in a failure that undoes all previous achievements, a moment that our adversaries relish. That's true. And that's why I'm also here for another purpose. To visit Hule. Hule? You mean that Hule? The Boris in Warhead? The same Hule who has been imprisoned in the Shackling Prison for over seven centuries? The nemesis of the Foxians who will never be forgiven and shall be imprisoned until the end of the cosmos. I can't quite remember the exact wording, but... Yes, the very same Hule. Usually, only emissaries from the Xianzhou Yao Qing Skyfaring Commission visit him once every century. Why do you have to visit him now, of all times? The Foxians in the Alliance made a pact to combat the Abominations, aiming to achieve justice and free their kin. That werewolf monster is to be forever imprisoned in the dark recesses of the Shackling Prison facing unending retribution. Given the situation on the Law Fu, those on the Yao Qing are concerned about Hule's imprisonment. I'm afraid that the routine visit every century is no longer sufficient to ease their concerns. That's why I was sent here, to reassure them. <sighs> it's all bad news. Well, not everything. There might be a silver lining. Oh, by the way, I found some clues about the thing you asked for. Huh. Tell me more. The Verdant Knights followed the route you mentioned and discovered the wreckage of the Whistling Flame ship. Unfortunately, there were no survivors and no cargo. <sighs> However, someone had already been on the scene before we arrived. Our people? Or someone from the IPC? No, neither. Yu Kong, have you heard of a person named Ron May? I'm still
still feeling sleepy. Hmm? Did I oversleep? Where did March and Don Hong go? There you are! <laughs> it's an honor to learn from you, Master Yanqing! In all those immersions and novels I watched, when apprentices want to pay their respects to their masters, they usually bring fancy gifts, kneel, and bow. I'm really sorry, but I haven't prepared anything yet. Hey, why are you blushing, Master Yanqing? This is, uh, the first time someone has called me Master. I need to, uh, get used to it. Ahem. <clears throat> Let me make it clear. Swordplay training is about improving your body, mind, and strength. It's not a casual game you can master overnight. I promised General Huayan that I'd teach you Cloud Knight swordplay, so you can participate in the war dance and defeat at least one opponent. I'll do my best, but if you break your master's rules... Fine. A promise is a promise. Since I promised to study hard, I'll do my best starting today. Great! That's the spirit. March is in your hands now, Yen Qing. Don't be too easy on her. Don Hung, do you even have a heart? Did you lose it somewhere? By the way, where's Yun Li? I've found a quiet spot in the back garden of the Palace of Astrum for our first lesson together. Seriously? It's the first day and you two are already late? Why is everyone on the Lafu so laid back? So disappointing. Uh, uh, Master Yun Li, you're already here. Sorry for keeping you waiting. Oh, wait. Were you trying to teach her in secret? <laughs> That's sneaky. <laughs> I'm just showing you what Lafu etiquette is all about. She might be my apprentice, but it's customary for the master to personally escort their apprentice to the place of learning. As the host, I'll be teaching Miss March the essence of Lawfu swordplay, after which she'll emerge victorious in the war dance ring. You won't be complaining about Lawfu swordplay then. Stand aside, rookie. Let me show you how we Ju Ming sword masters treat their apprentices. Quickly, over here, Miss March. This is a reverse mentorship gift from me to you. I hope you put it to good use. What's this? Sienjo clothing? It's so beautiful! Sword practice requires precise movements. This outfit is tailored to fit perfectly and allows for smooth movements. I even added some small accessories. I put a lot of thought into it. You're awesome, Master Yun Li! See? <laughs> See? How can you compete with me? I'll teach March 7th the essence of Ju Ming swordplay so she can win the contest with my sword skills. Hmm. Actually, I've prepared something too. Huh? You have a gift for me too, Master Yan Qing? Since you want to learn swordplay, Miss March, you'll need suitable weapons. So, I went out of my way to prepare a pair of swords overnight. Unfortunately, I didn't have time to ask the craftsmen to customize the swords for you, but I did my best to choose ones that look nice and are suitable for a beginner. I hope you like them, Miss March. <sighs> Thank you, Master Yanqing! <laughs> Bet you didn't see that one coming, did you, Yun Li? <laughs> the real competition is just getting started. Lucky to have two great masters, but why does it feel like things are getting a bit weird? So 
what do you think, Masters? Does this outfit suit me? Perfect. I chose it carefully. It's perfect for beautiful young swordswomen like you and me. Ahem. <clears throat> All right, let's get started with the training. The person next to me is a Cloud Knight instructor I've brought in. For your first lesson, try exchanging a couple of moves with him. Uh, wait. We're having actual combat training for the first lesson? Isn't that a bit too intense? Well, I heard you have some experience with archery and martial arts. The first thing we're going to do is see just how strong your fundamentals are. Come on, step forward and strike with the sword in the most natural way you can think of. It's important for us to grasp your natural movements so we can decide where to start and what you need to learn. If you're ready, let's begin. Uh, <laughs> okay. <sighs> I didn't expect the first lesson to be so intense. Miss March has quick hands and a flexible body. She's a perfect fit for practicing Lafu swordplay. However, she lacks strength, and her strikes were a bit unfocused. But don't worry, that's totally normal for beginners. Once she starts practicing Dooming swordplay, she'll make heaps of progress. Given the situation, I believe Miss March should start by working on... Her, her strength. Footwork. <laughs> Seriously, do you actually know anything about swordplay or what? I could ask you the same thing. Dual swords require agility. So what's more important than footwork? <sighs> Instead of focusing on her strengths, we should address her weaknesses. The drawback of wielding two swords is not generating enough force. What good is being quick on your feet if you don't have strength? It's not like we're dancing here. Skilled sword masters know how to play to their strengths and work on their weaknesses. Start with what you're good at, then tackle your weaknesses. That's the right way to learn. <laughs> You're quite the theorist, huh? Theorist? I, you claim to be able to talk to swords. So what does that make you? A lunatic? Uh, hey, it's only my first lesson, and you're already arguing. Uh, come on, calm down, Masters. I'll have to improve both my footwork and strength anyway. So it doesn't matter which one comes first. But it does matter. Just, Just listen, listen to, to me, me March 7th. Aww. Dear Himeko, Mr. Yang, and Pom Pom, we're all good here on the Sianjo La Fu, so no need to worry. By the way, how's your trip going? As for me, I've somehow become the apprentice to two Cloud Knight Sword Masters, and I've been honing my sword skills with their guidance. One of them is Yen Ching, the boy we've all met before. The other is Yun Li, the granddaughter of General Hua Yen from the Xianzhou Ju Ming. Both masters are super strict, giving me a real taste of how hard sword training can be. I tried to drag her into this, but she refused. Then I tried to rope Don Hung in, but Master Yen Ching wouldn't have it. Still, I didn't let the difficulty get to me. In just a few weeks, my sword skills have improved a lot! Both my masters think I have unique talents in swordplay, and are literally fighting each other to teach me their skills. Thanks to their guidance, I've actually made some progress. When I get back to the Express, I'll definitely show off my skills and impress you all! Looking forward to your reply. Yours, March 7th. Well done! 
again. <sighs> Let's call it a day. Miss March's sword skills are really coming along. She'll hold her own just fine in the war dance. Uh, just you wait and see. I'll show off my skills in the ring and win a match. I'll make both of you proud. <laughs> Can you believe it? March 7th has actually become a pretty decent swordmaster in such a short time. Now I understand why Grandpa always had a grin on his face while training me. <laughs> Are you sure he wasn't laughing at you? Oh, shut up! <laughs> <laughs> it's all thanks to your amazing guidance, Masters. Miss March, you're really getting the hang of wielding dual swords. If you're keen on advancing, trying out different Sanjo blades can improve your touch. Oh, let me see. Which sword is the most powerful? Single sword? Great sword? Or maybe a flying sword? There's no such thing as the most powerful sword. It's all about the skill of the sword master. Yenqing wields several flying swords, while I only wield one. But remember how I kicked his butt at the Alchemy Commission? First, you didn't kick my butt. Second, you'll never kick my butt. Third, how about we settle this right now and see who kicks whose butt? Yeah, I'm up for that. <laughs> and if I kick your butt, you'll drop out of the war dance. Deal? Why are you two arguing again? I thought things had been improving between you lately. There was talk that the leading disciples of the Law Fu and Juming generals were supposed to face off in the war dance, but for some reason, they suddenly teamed up to train an apprentice of their own. <laughs> Turns out, the rumors are true. Tomorrow is the big day of the war dance. Shouldn't you two be focusing on honing your skills instead of teaching sword play here? Uh, you're... Um, you're... Oh, that's right! You're the pink-haired box from the Yaoqing! This is Mr. Jiaocho. The healer working for the general of the Xianzhou Yao Qing. Ah, got it. So, you're the participant attending the war dance on behalf of the Yao Qing. And you were trying to sneak a peek at our training? Sorry for the misunderstanding. I don't know anything about martial arts. I'm just here on the general's orders to take care of some official business. I didn't mean to interrupt your training. I'll be on my way. If you know nothing about martial arts, why were you smirking earlier? <sighs> well, my curiosity got the better of me, I suppose. When I heard Miss March's pondering about what to learn, I couldn't help but wander over. From my professional experience, cleavers, slicers, chopping knives, and carving knives are all just tools. Kind of like frying, sautéing, boiling, and deep-frying in cooking. They're just ways for people to show off their skills. How you use them really depends on the ingredients you're working with. It's like your sword teaching methods. If you align your ingredient, in other words, your apprentice's natural tendencies, with the right cooking method, by which I mean the teaching method that best suits her, She'll make double the progress in half the time. For example, golden eggplant tastes best when fried, cloud peppers when stir-fried, and yellow boulder beef when simmered. It's all about discovering the nature of the ingredients. Uh, I mean, apprentice. Oh, 
talk about food is making me hungry. Are you a healer? Why are you talking about food? Well, it's just a metaphor. The medicinal school I follow on the Sanjo Yaoqing is called the Ranja School, that specializes in food therapy. So it's only natural that I know a thing or two about cooking. So, you're the general's cook? I'm a healer. <sighs> but anyway, a cook who isn't interested in health doesn't make for a good advisor. Fine. Call me a cook, if you want. Seeing the way you're looking at me, it's obvious you think I'm just some feeble academic who likes to blabber on about martial arts. But, in reality, I know a thing or two about killing. After all, the art of healing inherently encompasses both life and death. Why is this guy suddenly getting all serious with kids? Do you recognize this bottle of medicine in my hand? No. This is called Tumble Dust, an extract from an exotic flower named Yabra. Ugh, is it poison? Well, it depends on how it's used. With just one drop, it's able to numb a patient's body during surgery, making them painless throughout the entire process. However, increase the dose or the potency, and it'll slow the metabolism, making the blood thin and resulting in the loss of all senses. Even long-life species cannot escape its effects. This thing can save lives or take them. It's more powerful than the swords in your hands. That may be so, but still. I prefer settling things with a sword than, you know. Huh. Looks like I did get you all wrong. You're not a feeble scholar, but a sinister and despicable one. Hey, hey, why the insults all of a sudden? I'm just sharing some medical knowledge here, not persuading you to poison anyone. Seems like you get real excited when talking about poison. I can't tell if that's an honorable thing or sinister. Picture this. Two individuals. The one standing is full of malice. The other lying down is honorable and righteous. How can the one who's lying down label the one standing as sinister? In the throes of combat, where life and death hinge on a singular moment, every idea fades into nothingness. The only thing that matters is staying alive. Surviving the battlefield reshapes all notions of worth, be it integrity or treachery. In my eyes, their significance is negligible. Perhaps you've underestimated Yunli and me, Mr. Zhao Cho. We may be young, but we've seen our fair share of war. <laughs> well, well. Then you should know that the war dance is nothing more than a contest. So why are you so focused on it? When I was appointed as the ringmaster for the war dance, I asked the general, we Cloud Knights are supposed to charge into the fray and slay enemies. Why do we have to swing swords in a ring just to please an audience? And this is how the General replied. To unsheath your sword in a ring is no different than on the battlefield, as your sword reveals the might of all Cloud Knights. The War Dance is the perfect chance to showcase martial virtue and forge alliances from all over the cosmos. When we unsheath the sword without drawing blood, we not only display our might, but also the martial virtue of the Cloud Knights. That's quite an insightful statement, Yan Ching. Well, my apologies for being so short-sighted. I've been on the Law Fu for quite some time, but I haven't had the chance to see the ceremony venue for myself yet. Hearing you speak so highly of it has piqued my curiosity. 
Would you mind showing me around? You want to see the Sky Splitter ship where the war dance will be held? Let's go! I bet Yun Lee and Miss March haven't seen it either, right? Well then, I'll give you all a tour. Looks like a lot of other visitors have also come to catch a glimpse of the Sky Splitter. What's up, Mr. Jiaocho? No, it's nothing. Do you see that airship in the distance? That's the Sky Splitter, the venue for the war dance ceremony. It doesn't look all that impressive from this distance. The Sky Splitter is actually a decommissioned Lafu military vessel. People aren't allowed on board until the war dance officially commences. Tomorrow, when the bell rings and the ceremonial cannons roar, I'll be there representing the Cloud Knights of Sianjo La Fu, standing in the ring, ready to take on challengers from all over the cosmos. Since I was a kid, I've been training in swordplay and the art of war under the general. Every day, I'd swing my sword 10,000 times, and then thrust it 10,000 times, repeating the process over and over. I understand that I'm not like other kids. I never envied the toys and freedom they all had. I never found sword practice boring or hard. Even in the thick of battle, facing down savage abominations, I never felt scared. Each day, I could feel myself getting stronger and stronger, and I racked up countless victories. It's the best feeling in the world. But then, I faced a really tough opponent, and just one slash shattered my confidence into a thousand pieces. That's when I felt true fear for the first time. Maybe that's what Mr. Zhao Cho meant by life and death hinge on a singular moment. Every idea fades into nothingness. After that, I had to pick up the pieces and try to put myself back together. But no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't seem to find my old happy self again. I often ask myself, why do I wield my sword? If defeat is inevitable, why do I continue to fight? Is it to reclaim the joy of victory? To meet the general's expectations? Or to secure my honor among the Cloud Knights? While the general could teach me the art of swordplay, he couldn't teach me why I should keep on going. He said, the reason must come from within myself. I've been struggling to find that reason. But after talking with you, Mr. Zhao Cho, I think I already have that reason in mind. As a member of the Cloud Knights and the General's Apprentice, I've had a weight on my shoulders. And I know there's still more to shoulder. But when I wield my sword, it feels like I'm letting go of everything. I love the feeling of giving it my all, facing any obstacle in front of me, pressing forward. That's why I wield my sword. Oh, Yenqing. So young, yet so grown up. By the way, how old are you exactly? Age doesn't really matter. All Swordmasters will understand how I feel. Hmm. I get it. Looks like all the kids on the Lawfu live tough lives. So, how about you, Miss Yunli? 
It's not polite to ask a girl her age, no matter which Siendo ship you're on. I'm not asking your age. I'm asking if you have a dream like Yan Ching has. You don't talk like a cook. You sound more like a TV host or something. <laughs> Need I repeat myself again? I'm a healer. Well, I... I don't have a dream like Yan Ching does. The only reason I'm participating in the Ringmaster's Challenge is because I made a promise to my grandfather that I'd win the precious sword he's contributed to the war dance. Sounds like that mind of yours is just filled with swords. <laughs> I bet you've got nothing better on your mind. My father was a craftsman on the Sienjo Juming. Because of his foolishness, many innocent people fell victim to the cursed swords he forged. Since I was a kid, it's been clear to me that not everyone deserves to have a weapon in their hands. Giving them a sword is no different than being cruel to the innocent. So, whenever I come across someone unworthy of a sword, I can't help but want to take it away from them. <laughs> Given that Yen Qing is the war dance ringmaster, I'm stepping up to challenge him to ensure the precious sword doesn't fall into the hands of an unworthy master. Hey, what do you mean by an unworthy master? <sighs> I see. It's not easy for kids on the Ju Ming either. Well, it's better to have a reason for wielding a sword than to be lost and confused. I've saved countless Cloud Knights in my life, and there are plenty of exceptional warriors just like the two of you. What happened, Mr. Zhao Cho? Oh, oh, nothing. I was just reminded of some old friends and old tales. Judging from my professional perspective as a healer, both of you possess remarkable vitality. Your energies flow like raging fires and mighty gales. The upcoming fight will definitely be impressive. Well, we've seen the Sky Splitter and toured the Stargazer Navalia. I guess it's time to say goodbye for now. What? You're leaving already? But you haven't asked me about my dreams. I've been working hard too, you know. It's getting late, Miss March. Unlike you lot, I'm a grown-up bound by responsibilities and duties. The tasks entrusted to me by the General won't complete themselves. By the way, Yan Qing, is it normal to have so many people wandering around in an automated area like the Stargazer Navalia? Actually, this is a restricted area. But since you're all guests, I made an exception, so you could take a look around. <sighs> I understand. Well, I'll take my leave. I wish you both the best of luck in the ring tomorrow. Uh, seriously? I just spent so much time thinking about my dream, but he didn't even ask me. <laughs> now that we're done with our tour of the Sky Splitter, shall we continue with our training? Why don't we take a day off? What? You want to secretly practice swordplay by yourself? Dream on. <laughs> you know cramming before a fight never works out. For some reason, seeing the Sky Splitter has boosted my confidence. So, I've decided to conserve my strength for tomorrow. All right, I'll take you out of the Stargazer Navalia. This is not a beast ship. I need some time to take care of things. 
you willingly donned the skin of a lowly beast to join this mission, dedicating yourself to our glorious cause. And now you're telling me you can't handle it? Do you realize how many ships we need? I'm doing my best, all right? It takes time to figure all this out. When the guns go off tomorrow, all eyes will be on it. That'll be our only chance. How's that? Who's there? Who are you guys? An impromptu inspection. Why are there outsiders loitering in Stargazer Navalia? And a bunch of kids at that. <laughs> hey, kids. Didn't your parents ever tell you to stay away from the Stargazer Navalia? I know it's an automated facility, but it doesn't mean you can just break in and do what you want. First of all, I'm an adult. Second, I didn't just break in. Yeah, we flew here on a star skiff. Like, whoosh! Well, I'm not trying to tell you off, but this place is off limits to the public, you know? Uh, big sis! Let's go! I, I want to play in Ever Hunt Planes! Ever hunt planes? Uh, uh, yeah, sure. Big Sis will take you there. Shuha! You should have let me. Shh, the overhaul is done, and everything looks good. We should leave. Just said, Yenching. What did I say? Big sis, let's go. I want to play in everyone planes. Uh, come on, can't you read the room? Something is definitely off about the three people we just met. Yeah, anyone could see that. <laughs> I just wanted to hear you say it again. That pink haired fox tried to say something. I'm pretty sure he sent something fishy. Since he's not familiar with this place, he just dropped us a hint. But you didn't seem to be paying attention at all. I knew that from the beginning. That Cloud Knight didn't recognize Master Yen Ching at all. That's really weird. What? <laughs> Is he famous on the Lavu or something? Not even the Cloud Knights on the Juming, who all know my glorious name, might recognize my face. You have a point. A Cloud Knight, a member from the Skyfaring Commission, and a craftsman. They're from various departments, and the reason for the overhaul seems legit. But one of them blurted out some weird language just now. Did you hear that? <sighs> I have a feeling that if we secretly tail them, We'll definitely catch these guys in the act. Follow my lead, and be careful not to blow our cover. Never mind who they are. Let's just film them. We should have just killed those lowly beasts. Those little brats won't take up much space. There are boxes all over this place. Just dump them into one and no one will notice. Cut the theatrics, Grulok. Even the slightest slip-up could interfere with Lord Moktok's plans. So where are we heading next? To check the freight skiffs. We've got a lot of preparations to do. Also, don't forget to take those crates with you. Weapons, supplies. We've got to be well prepared. Otherwise, we're screwed. So... are they... smugglers? What exactly are they up to? I have no clue. But 
They seem to be moving those crates. I've got an idea. We can hide inside the crates and follow them. Let's just put the cargo here for now, all right? Then we'll move on to inspect the ships. Lord Moktok said that as soon as we're done, we're to board the freight skiff and leave this place. Don't worry, I've changed the shipping schedule. You two, come with me. Is it just me? I keep smelling that stench of lowly beasts everywhere we go. Don't be so paranoid. Looks like they're planning to escape on the skiffs in Stargazer Navalia. Plans, but where do they come from? And what do they want to do on the Sanjo? Oh, they're definitely up to something bad. Wait, uh, they disappeared! Uh, let's catch up to them! Don't be so paranoid! We're running out of time! Get over here! Shuhart, I'm coming! they up to? They're all wearing official uniforms, but I'm pretty sure they're not members of the Skyfaring Commission, the Artisanship Commission, or the Cloud Knights. <sighs> this is way too suspicious. Uh, never mind who they are. Let's just film them. That way, if they do anything bad, we'll have solid evidence against them. Look at this. A freight star skiff with enough room to fit at least 20 of my men. I'll let the others know and have them prepare more star skiffs. Once we're past the checkpoint, there will be beast ships waiting for us. Lord Moktok is ready. The revival of our ancient bloodline all hinges on this operation. What did he just say? Beast ships? Who's there? It's those brats! I told you to get rid of them, but you didn't listen, you idiot! Wipe them all out! Is this possible? How did these Foxians change their appearances like that? They're not Foxians at all. They revealed their true form. They're Borison, just like the bandits I defeated on the IPC ship. Wait, that means... Well, how did the Borison manage to infiltrate the Sienjo? It's not just a simple disguise of wearing our clothing and shaving their whiskers. They're somehow able to alter their appearance to be indistinguishable from Foxians. They even have official IDs for the Skyfaring Commission, the Artisanship Commission, and... and... even the Cloud Knights? Let me check this fake Cloud Knights tag. Maybe it'll give us some clues. Lujun? An officer of the patrol defense squad? Ah! Wait! What's the matter? I encountered a patrol officer named Lujun before. It was a few weeks ago, when we were transporting the Borison prisoners. If they can forge official identities and move around the Sienjo without raising suspicion... Oh no. This is bad. Uh, even worse. If you find one cockroach on the Express, 
It usually means... There are more Boris in hiding on the Sienjo. I bet their plan is much bigger than just stealing information. We've got to report this to the Seed of Divine Foresight. I am glad to finally meet you in person, guests from the Astral Express. I'm Fei Xiao, the general of the Xianzhou Yao Cheng. Let me introduce our guest to you. The one dressed in green. He's the reincarnation of Inviter Lune, and the person behind him is the newest member of the crew. I've heard a lot about you. Outside the reports from the Law Fu, the Skyfaring Commission of the Yao Xing has also gathered plenty of information about both of you. I've been eager to meet you face to face for reasons that I'm sure General Jing Yuan has explained, right? <laughs> That's right. But don't worry, this isn't a trial. I just want to have a chat with you and get a better understanding of the facts. According to General Jing Yuan's report, the Ruin Legion is to blame for the Ambrosial Arbor Crisis, and all Arbiter Generals should pay attention to the Ruin Author's movements. Over the years, the Destruction's minions have wreaked havoc on countless worlds, and the Alliance has been keeping an eye on them but no one expected them to join hands with the remnants of the Abundance. The damage caused by the Ambrosial Arbor Crisis was far less severe than expected, which is good news for us. However, it was quite different from the Ruin Legion's usual style of destroying life wherever they go. While I trust the bravery of the Divine Foresight and the Nameless, I'm curious about some details missing from the report. I'd like to take this chance to have an exchange with both of you. Let me be clear, the questions I'll ask might not reflect my actual thoughts, so please don't take offense if any of my questions seem a bit harsh. Please go ahead, General. But keep in mind we can only answer based on what we know. And, perhaps, you already have the answers to your questions in your heart. <laughs> you have a clever tongue. I like it. The Merlin's claw is quite articulate. Right now, her intentions are unknown, and Jing Yuan wants us to be honest. Maybe I'll just stick to the facts we know. Let's cut to the chase. Before the crisis struck, the Astral Express was guided here by a Stellaron hunter, a wanted felon, in an attempt to resolve the Stellaron crisis. However, everyone in the cosmos knows of the Stellaron hunter's reputation. So, why did you place so much, so much trust in them? Could it be that some of you have a connection with them? has it that Elio, the leader of the Celeron Hunters, possesses the power to see into the future. He foresaw that the Sienjo and the Express would have important roles to play in the war against Nanook. That's why we were lured here to the Law Fu, to deal with the Celeron Crisis and fulfill the prophecy. General Jing Yuan believes in this prophecy too, as mentioned in the report. I'm curious why you didn't question it at all. Could it be because one of the Stellaron Hunters is actually an old acquaintance of General Jing Yuan? <sighs> Please be cautious with your words, Merlin's Claw. Let's avoid sowing doubt among our comrades. That Stellaron Hunter used to be my disciple. So are you putting my loyalty in question too? I'm simply bringing up the doubts about General Jing Yuan that exist within the Alliance. Since I'm representing them, perhaps you can just imagine me as one of those old geezers. Let's move on to the next question. 
The reports suggest that Don Shu, the master of the disciples of Sanctus Medicus, colluded with the Lord Ravager and used the power of the Stellaron to resurrect the Ambrosial Arbor. But here's the thing. Don Shu was just a chief alchemist. Even if she colluded with our enemies and summoned the Stellaron, how did she manage to bypass the Vidyatara guards around the Ambrosial Arbor? If the Lawfu hadn't exiled Don Hung, leaving the Vidyatara with no leader, they wouldn't have fallen into chaos, and there wouldn't have been the opportunity to bring the Stellaron to the roots of the arbor unnoticed. And Vibrator Lune was exiled due to his own crimes. Now, Don Hung, as his reincarnation, is free from his sins. However, why did he risk trespassing on the Sienjo Lawfu before his exile was lifted? I was concerned about the safety of my companions, so I acted brazenly. I admit I was reckless at the time, but... But he returned despite everything. Now, let's consider the outcome. The arbor was resurrected, and the Lawfu required a High Elder to repair the seal and suppress the plague mark. It's hard not to think about the stakes involved, right? According to the report, Lord Ravager Fantilia is the mastermind behind the entire conspiracy. She disguised herself as an amicassador of the Skyfaring Commission and traveled with you, only to vanish without a trace later on. It seems too convenient to label her as a scapegoat. Back then, we were working with Diviner Fu, and she also witnessed Fantilia's true form. You're not going to doubt one of your own people, are you? Of course not. We can trust the testimony of Master Diviner Fu Xuan. However, even if she saw it with her own eyes, we can't completely rule out the possibility that she might have been deceived. After all, it's suspicious how the culprit just bizarrely vanished. Well, it appears that you are still unable to give explanations for several details about how the Nameless got involved in the Ambrosial Arbor Crisis. Generals, I am finished with my questioning. So, what do you think, General Feishao? Have the doubts in the report been cleared up? <sighs> the two Nameless have been honest in their answers. Even though there are some tricky details, my intuition tells me there is nothing wrong. However, the three questions I posed earlier were not just for the Nameless, but for you too, General Jingyuan. First, the Disciples of Sanctus Medicus grew uninterrupted on the Law Fu. Yet the Six Charioteers were not aware of it. That was a dereliction of duty. Second, you believed in the Stellaron Hunter's prophecy and entrusted outsiders to solve the crisis, even granting them access to the Plague Mark. That was a dereliction of responsibility. Third, you insist on holding the war dance right after the Ambrosial Arbor Crisis, putting the Lawfu back in the spotlight. That is a dereliction of wisdom. Merlin's Claw, is this your line of thinking, or the Ten Lords? From the moment I walked in, I made it clear that the questions I'd ask might not reflect my actual thoughts. <sighs> the disciples of Sanctus Medicus were deeply rooted and had been plotting for a long time. I admit it was my negligence for not noticing it earlier. As for the Stellaron Hunter's prophecy, I didn't believe all of it. But in the end, the Law Fu did survive the Ambrosial Arbor Crisis. So, I think it's safe to say that Elio's prophecy about the future holds some merit. And as for the war dance... Do you think I'm unaware of the risks? 
However, risks can also be opportunities. The law fool has lain low for too long. I believe it's time to stir up the dregs hidden in the depths and wash them away once and for all. <laughs> Just as I expected from our sophisticated divine foresight, you have a way with words. I like it. But, unfortunately, ever since the report was submitted, the Alliance has been filled with rumors and speculation. Even within the law, Fu, there are people accusing you of neglecting your duties, resulting in the Ambrosial Arbor's resurrection. So what are your thoughts on all of this, General Fei Shao? As a fellow Arbiter General, I fully understand the difficulties of this position. Personally, I think all these rumors are meaningless drivel. Across the sea of stars, the divine foresight knows better than anyone else what happened on the Lawfu and the meaning behind it. Just as what happened on the Xianzhou Yao Qing recently. You mean the Xianzhou Yao Qing is also. The scouts of the Verdant Knights have sent back reports that Borison are making trouble again. The Borison packs that were once divided and scattered have started swallowing each other up forming larger and larger packs. Moreover, there's an entity named Mongus behind it all. An entity? According to the report, this entity isn't actually a Borison. It's a woman claiming to be the messenger of the Master of Immortality. She's described as having 12 faces and 12 pairs of fangs, as cruel as poison and as elusive as quicksand. The Borison believe she'll give them a chance to rise again. <sighs> That's Fentilia. That's right. You're lucky that I'm the one who came this time. If it were the Patina Justice or the Seer Strategist, this conversation might not be so friendly. I've always had faith in my instincts, so I don't doubt your good intentions. But the Alliance has its fair share of questions and doubts about the Law Fu. So, my plan is to come up with an acceptable answer to satisfy the Alliance. What's in this plan, General Fei Xiao? General Jing Yuan, you already know what has to be done. But since you don't want to be the bad guy, I'll take care of it for you. You need the final word from the Ten Lords Commission to quell any doubts. And for that, I'll have to ask the two Nameless to visit the Shackling Prison. No, I'm not imprisoning you. While you're there, I'll ask a judge in the Ten Lords Commission's Interrogation Division to record a detailed testimony with the Karmic Mirror from both of you. We'll fill in the gaps that weren't covered in the report, and silence any protests within the Alliance. I'm okay with that. Worried that I might go back in my word and keep you in the Shackling prison? Relax. If I wanted to do that, you'd already be behind bars. Once you're done with your testimony, you're free to come and go as you please. Then, as the Merlin's Claw requests... Oh, there's one more thing. This testimony is for silencing the voices of opposition within the Alliance. But I would like to urge General Jing Yuan to listen to the pleas of the Foxians on the Xianzhou Yaoqing. So, you are here for Hu Lei. Exactly. Hu Lei is locked up in the Law Fu's shackling prison. Since he is the broodlord of the Borison, I want to transfer him onto the Xianzhou Yaoqing and imprison him there. The recent movements of the Borison suggest they're planning something big so we must act preemptively. It makes sense to have the Foxians keep an eye on their arch nemesis. Since you trust my judgment, I'll repay that trust. What do you think about all this, General Huayan? <laughs> I was worried this would turn into a heated argument, but it seems like both of you are on the same page, solving each other's problems. I couldn't have asked for a better outcome. 
And as for Hu Lang, I'll send my lieutenants Zhao Cho and Mo Zha to check on his condition in prison and ready him for transport. If there are no more questions, shall we get this started? As General Jing Yuan requested, everything is prepared for your arrival, and I am here to receive you. The judges at the interrogation division also know your purpose in coming. The Shackling Prison. I... didn't expect to be back here after all these years. Don Hung. Don't worry about me. If you're ready, I'll open the gate for you. Exactly. Please come on in, dear guests. What are you looking at? The shackling prison on the Lawfu is completely different from the one on the Yaqing. It's completely underwater. Whether it's in the clouds or underwater, breaking free would still be a piece of cake for me. <laughs> still thinking about your old jailbreak tricks, huh? Forget it. You're free now. Just don't do anything stupid, or the judges will throw you back in there and lock you up for a few hundred years. You'll see me again in just a few days. Taking Hule back to the Yaoqing means a lot to the Foxians on the ship, and to the General herself. So stay alert. Guests, my name is Shui Yi. And I'm here on orders from the Incarceration Division of the Ten Lords Commission. We're Zhao Cho and Moza. General Fei Xiao sent us to extradite the Borisin criminal Hu Lei to the Yaoqing. We're here to inspect the conditions of his imprisonment and make preparations for the handover and transportation. I assume you've been briefed, Your Honor. Your visit request has been approved. I'll be your guide for this trip. Prisoner Hu Lei, the warhead and brood lord of the Boris and Abominations of Abundance and the arch nemesis of the Foxians, is responsible for 2,123 wars of aggression and countless associated crimes. Due to his heinous acts, he has been imprisoned in the depths of the Shackling Prison and subjected to the punishment of the Forest of Swords until the end of time. He shall never be pardoned. No need to repeat his crimes and sentence, Your Honor. He is the greatest enemy of us Foxians. The stories of his atrocities are used to terrify our children. I'm well aware of every crime he's committed. Let's move on to the next step. When it comes to visiting criminals, there are rules in place to ensure your safety. I know you've heard legends about Hu Lei since you were children, but your knowledge about him is likely very limited. Only the judges of the Ten Lords Commission truly know what kind of abomination is locked up at the bottom of the Shackling Prison. It has been centuries since Jing Liu, the former sword champion of the La Fu, captured Hu Lei. And during all those years, we never provided him with any food yet he somehow managed to stay alive. It defies all the documented physical characteristics of the Borison. The Forest of Swords, forged by the Punishment Division, is a device of intense torment, used to execute sinful abominations. Most Borison die within three days in the forest, but Hu Lei is different. Every time the blades pierce him, his body instantly heals. Despite the 
brutal punishment, he somehow manages to survive. The complex rules are there because of his abnormal characteristics. Do you understand now? I apologize for any offense caused. Please continue, Your Honor. I've given you the instructions regarding who lays visitation. Please make sure you read them carefully. And please, take this pellet before proceeding. No, I'm not taking random medicine. Then you won't be allowed to visit Hule. Just swallow it already. Hule is like all Borison. He can release a pheromone called Lupatoxin that induces fear. Thousands of years ago, we Foxians were enslaved by the Borison. Not because we were naturally weaker, but because of their Lupatoxin. This pill is for our own mental well-being. <sighs> I understand. I knew you were a reasonable person. Now that we've taken the medicine, let's proceed. <laughs> Your Honor. What is it? No, never mind. Maybe I'm just imagining things. Let's keep moving. Welcome, dear guests from the Express. Judge Hanya of the Interrogation Division. We've met before. Glad to meet you again. Please allow me to express my gratitude to you again for subduing the demons in the Fixtral Garden. Looks like while March 7th and I were clueless, you already made many friends on the Xianzhou Lofu. Even though you and I have met before, we can't show any favoritism under the Ten Lords. So, Please do as I command as we head to Scrivener Hall and beyond. Don't do anything without my permission. This is not a place for ordinary mortals. You and Mr. Danhang. Please come with me. Please lead the way, Your Honor. Please let me activate the mechanism before we all move forward. And please, watch your steps. These crates... They look oddly familiar. A few days ago, the Spiritfarers received reports about an IPC transport ship that was attacked by Borison. Then, a bunch of those abominations were dumped into this place. I had a feeling there would be trouble during the war dance. But throwing both the pirates and the cargo in jail? <laughs> That's a new one. I heard the Intelligentsia Guild crafted something dangerous. We have many records in the Hall of Karma about these wise ones. They love to tinker with forbidden technologies, always trying to push the limits of Ingenia. I caught a glimpse of the mechs in those crates, and they bear a striking resemblance to Borison. I wonder what they're planning this time. Well, business first. Let's keep moving. <sighs> Strange. I don't remember checking the containment facilities a second time. Even possible. 
The spirit farers follow the protocols, cutting off power to the mechs and sealing the crates. How could these mechs still start moving? It's just like what happened in the Artisanship Commission before. These goods went haywire and attacked everyone in sight. Something seems to be jamming communications within the Shackling prison. It's probably these mechs causing the trouble. These things showing up in the Shackling prison can only mean one thing. A prison break. And whoever delivered these goods clearly wanted them to go through the Xianzhou's strict inspection process to show the Skyfaring Commission and Cloud Knights how dangerous they were. They wanted these mechs to end up right here, in the Shackling prison. If these things already started taking action while nobody was paying attention, then the whole prison is in trouble, I'm afraid. And to make things worse, Another group of visitors just entered the depths of the Shackling prison. The messengers from the Xianzhou Yaoqing. And the prisoner they came to visit might be the target whom these wolf-shaped mechs were delivered here for. If that vicious beast manages to break free, it will be a catastrophe for the Xianzhou Lofu. Inside the delve, behind this door, is the greatest enemy of the Foxians, Hule. According to custom, envoys from the Yao Qing visit the Xianzhou La Fu once every century to check on this abomination's imprisonment and condition. Even though the Ten Lords Commission sentenced Hule to the Forest of Swords, suffering every day for the rest of his life, I understand that the Yao Qing messengers want to see him dead. Unfortunately, for the past seven centuries, they've had to return disappointed, because this beast simply can't be killed. If we can use his toxin to create medicine and save an innocent life, might help balance out some of the sins he's committed. Could you be the key to a cure for the general? Hule? <laughs> and once again, the envoys of the Yao Qing will leave disappointed. However, I won't say the same for me and my brothers. Who's there? I'm just a humble counselor of the Rhino Hound Pack. You can call me Mock Talk. Wardens, intruders on the lowest level! Send reinforcements! Nobody will hear you here. At the bottom of the Shackling Prison. Thank you for opening up the prison for us, Your Honor. We'll take it from here. No wonder I kept smelling that familiar stench. So, it wasn't just my imagination. Do your thing, Morsa. We mustn't let these abominations get any closer! Burn the gate! They can't be allowed here!
been a long time. Boy, <sighs> welcome back. since our last hunt. Duran's a whelp. Tell me your name. Oh, great Hule. Nemesis of the Foxians and the hunter of all beings. I'm Moktok, a humble counselor of the Rhino Hound Pack. I am only one insignificant heir spawned from your bloodline. It's been... At least seven centuries since you led our pack through the hunting grounds of the stars. I'm thrilled to see that you are as cunning and skillful as ever. Seven centuries. Seven centuries have passed. But... Why have Duran's whelps grown to look like this? Tell me, Moktok. Why have you grown to assemble our most despicable slaves and enemies, the Foxians? I've been commanded to release you from this cursed prison. It is Senjaya's will. That's why I had to take a magic pill, don the skin of a lonely beast, and play along with their hypocrisy. Since you have an escape plan, tell me. What's our next move to get off of this ridiculously large ship? My brothers and I will lock down this prison, trapping the prison guards inside. This will buy us some time. The rest of my crew, who are undercover like me, will secure the vessels for our escape. According to the plan, we only have a tight two-hour window to get out of here. Originally, I intended to carry out the plan tomorrow. But they're planning to transfer you to the Sienjo Yaoqing now. So I seize this opportunity to set you free. <sighs> what a reckless plan, you idiot. Even if we manage to get the ships, our chances of escaping are slimmer than the Foxian slipping through my claws. But we have no other choice. The angel serving under the Master of Immortality sent me with a message. Only your return will end the prolonged divisions among the Borison. Every one of my crew is ready to lay down their lives if it means setting you free. <laughs> A sneaky weakling like you is actually showing some reckless bravery with this plan. Fine. You'll get what you want. And all of Duran's whelps will, too. Well then, my lord. We should leave now. Before we go... Give me one of those magic pills. My lord, you seriously want to don the skin of a lowly beast? That would be a disgrace to your greatness, my lord. You idiot. Greatness means nothing without freedom. Once I get out, only the disguise that won't raise any suspicion. As you wish, my lord. <sighs> Is that Foxy enslaved by Mew? No, he's an envoy from the Sienjo Yaoqing. I plead you to endure him a bit, my lord, as he's more valuable as a hostage. Take him, guys. Time to move out. Madam Hanya, the Wardens in all areas are regrouping. Those Ingenium enemies are wandering around and causing heavy casualties. And to make things worse, those Iron Wolves broke open the cages and let the criminals out! We've called for backup, but it seems like all communication is jammed. Let's preserve our strength and first take down the isolated prisoners. By decree of the Ten Lords, all prison breakers and intruders shall be apprehended, dead or alive. Just a short time ago, the nether key mechanism was activated. It was probably Madame Shui and the Yao Qing messengers heading to the bottom of the prison. Given the situation, I'm afraid that area is exactly where our enemies are targeting. 
We mustn't let that vile beast escape from its cage. We've gathered all the prison guards who can still fight, and we'll split up and secure each floor. Go! Those intruders are quite bold. They must have been planning this for quite a while. Indeed, but Borison tend to favor direct and aggressive approaches. Crafting careful and precise plans like this is simply not their style. Let's focus on the current situation right now. Please help me. What's the fastest way to the bottom of this prison, Miss Hanya? If we don't get there quickly, we'll soon be outnumbered by all the enemies inside. We'll have to bend the rules. Please, follow me. Looks like there was a fierce battle here not long ago. <sighs> the gate to the prison delve is wide open. Hule has managed to break free. Where are the Yaoqing messengers? And where's my sister? Are they still alive? Let's look around. Maybe we'll find some clues. Zhui Yi is here. Miss Zhui Yi briefly sacrificed herself. My condolences, Miss Hanya. Condolences? Well, that's unnecessary. You must understand. Thanks to the Ten Lords' blessing, my sister turned into an Ingenium centuries ago. Dying and returning as just a soul to the Hall of Karma's document office has become a routine for her. While I'm not keen on seeing her throw away her body like it's some replaceable part, but... By the way, have you seen bodies that might be the Yaoqing messengers? One of them is a Foxian wearing exquisite clothes, and the other wears a dark cloak, like a fugitive. No. I haven't found any Foxian bodies. Only Borison ones. So, the intruders and in Hule are holding the Yaoqing messengers hostage. This is the worst situation. With hostages in their grasp, the prison guards can't do anything about the prisoners. If anything happens to the messengers, the relationship between the Yaoqing and the Luofu could be irreversibly damaged. We must rescue the messengers, get out of here, and spread the news. We mustn't give up as long as there's a glimmer of hope. What have you found, Miss Hanya? Her soul hasn't returned to the Hall of Karma yet. At such a critical moment, her death can give us information that we can turn into an advantage. Let me see. The damage isn't too bad. If I can fix it up, my sister will have a temporary body. Hanya, I... I... I'm back. Welcome back, sister. I don't know what kind of expression I should have at a time like this. Happy? Tears of joy? <laughs> Forget it. I'm used to you coming back in all sorts of forms. Now is not the time for j, -j jokes This Psycrane can't put hold all of me. Sister, what did you see when you were... killed? 
one of the Yaoqing messengers escaped, and the other one was taken hostage and brought upwards? Besides the Borison, there were other intruders. Invisible. Invisible intruders? What does that even mean? How many conspiracies are tangled up in this mess? Do me a favor, sister. The intruders have cut off all communication between inside and outside the prison. And now you're the only person, the only bird, who can slip out undetected. Make sure you deliver the news to the outside world. I... Understand. Please be careful, sister. You are different from me. Time is running out, Miss Hanya. If we keep delaying, those Borison will escape from the prison. All right. If we happen to come across that Yao Qing messenger who got away... <sighs> no. Stopping Hulei should probably be our top priority. <sighs> the prison management on the Lawfu is truly concerning. Is that so? At least two different groups of intruders infiltrated here. The wolf cubs and these Mara-struck soldiers. Their hiding technique, it's pretty similar to the wind mantle technique used by the Vidyatara serving Kylorum Venti on the Yao Qing. What do you think? <sighs> well, never mind if you don't have any clues. Now is not the time to exchange assassination techniques. I'm Waza. My friend fell into the clutches of that wolf. I was planning to escape and report back as quickly as possible. But now it seems. <sighs> the prison on the Law Fu is a real maze, I must admit. Thank you for your help, Mr. Moza. We'll do our best to ensure your friend's safety. No. You can do nothing for him now. And you shouldn't be focusing on his safety at the moment. Your friend is in Hulei's clutches, and you're just going to leave him behind? Look, I'm the Yao Qing General's guard, not his. I've seen how that giant wolf fights, and there's no way. Trying to save my friend will only get us killed. <sighs> I don't know how you think, but I won't throw my life away for a lost cause. Listen up. I've been tracking these fugitives, and I know their next move. They're planning to seal off the entire prison to keep the outside world in the dark. The worst case scenario, we are all killed by that giant wolf, and the shackling prison is sealed off. No one will know about us or about their escape until it's too late. And the best case scenario... The best case scenario would be, we seal the gates and trap the enemy inside with us. We can't let that monstrous wolf escape. Hopefully, someone will eventually notice that something is off and come to help. As for whether we'll still be alive by then, it's not something we should think about. You should have a way of comforting people, Mr. Mozu. As a person of the Yao Qing, I've always searched for something meaningful to give my life to. I have to make it out alive. My companions are waiting for me. <laughs> As another world dweller, I've already died once. Yeah. We won't give up. Not until the very last moment. None of you are part of the Ten Lords Commission so sacrificing yourselves isn't the right move. As a judge, it's my responsibility to guard this prison, 
And if someone should step up to stop Hule from escaping, it should be me, not you. Once we reach the gate, I hope you'll help me seal it. After that, I'll do everything I can to fight the Borison. Do you find a safe place to hide and wait for reinforcements? Now, let's proceed upward. Just one step away from freedom. As we pass through the gate, no one will be able to stop us. So this hostage is useless now. Kill him, Moktok. He's getting away. Do something, Jiao Cho. It's just like the old days, you useless loser. Just do something! Maybe this Yao Qing messenger can strike a deal in exchange for his life. He can use his status to help us escape from the Xianzhou. What do you think, Mr. Jiao Zhou? <laughs> oh, just look at you. Fallen so low during my absence. You're even negotiating with livestock. As far as I recall, no one from the Yao Qing would ever consider a deal with Duran's offspring. I've got to make this beast stay here, whether it's for the sake of Fei Xiao or the Yao Qing. Deal. I certainly have more value alive. My identity, my knowledge of the Xianzhou, and my understanding of many things that your minions have no knowledge of. They'll all be valuable. <laughs> Lonely beast. Muster up that pitiful tongue of yours and plead for what remains of your life. Speak up. I'm afraid you're unaware. The woman who defeated you, Jing Liu, she has recently returned to the Law Fu. Your opportunity for revenge is right in front of you. <sighs> My lord, this slave is talking nonsense. I never heard anything about this. May I just kill him now? Silence, Moktok. And you, slave. From now on, you'll stay by my side. You'll only speak and move when I allow you to. Otherwise, I'll dismember you from head to tail, inch by inch. Got it? But, my lord... We must stay here for some time, Mark Talk. Fear not. Because once I step out of the prison, it's the people of the Xianzhou who should tremble in fear. I'll show them what true calamity means. Now, Duran's whelps, follow me! Report! After we lost contact with the Shackling prison, we received a message from a Psycrane. The prisoners have revolted, and the criminal Hule is nowhere to be found! What about the Yaoqing messengers, and the Nameless? No news at the moment. We're trying to restore contact with the Shackling prison as soon as possible. I see. You're dismissed. General Jing Yuan, General Hua Yan, it's just as we suspected. 
The rise of the Ambrosial Arbor was not the end of things, but the beginning. The Hand of the Ruined Legion has already sown the seeds of destruction. From this moment on, the Sienjo Alliance will face an even greater challenge from both the abominations of abundance and the destruction itself. If this is what they want, I'm always up for a challenge. As the Marshal Special Envoy, I'll dispatch the Lawfu Cloud Knights to pursue Hule myself. Looks like the hidden drags have finally come to the surface. And as I said before, it's time to wash them away. Once and for all.